Good evening, car haulers. I'm asking you, is the transport software working? This is Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> I'm Jay. I'm the Car Hauling Dispatcher. It's Tuesday nights live. You know, I do that a little bit live where I kind of click around and do all that. Everything's live. You're live. And it is Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. So this is where I'm talking about everything car hauling, dispatching, load boards, uh, setting up a car hauling business, auto transport brokering, new car shipping customers. Trucks, trailers, insurance, CDL, ELD, DOT, FMCSA, etc. So this is Auto Transport Intel, and I do want to welcome you back to Tuesday night. If this is your first time here, let's talk about what we're going to do. So uh, first, I welcome you back to Tuesday night, and I'm looking over here. This is where I've got my live chat and my other fancy gear, and then my main laptops over here and you're looking at me on my webcam. So I'm going to say hello to everybody. Okay. So again, if you're new here, this is the rundown. Um, I'm going to do a hello to the live chat. And then after I talk, because the thing is, it's really important. I, I would like to acknowledge everybody coming in. That's a big part of the show is the live chat. I don't want to miss anybody. And if I missed you in the past, I apologize now. Uh, please say hello again. If I've talked to you recently, please say hello. Remind me what it is that we talked about, um, uh, talking about new trailers or new car hauler advice or central dispatch searches, just remind me um, because um, things are picking up, which is really exciting. Um, then we're going to go into industry news, which is I go through Facebook and I share memes and signs and wrecks and you know all kinds of craziness so yeah real fancy schmancy if you've got something you want to see on the show send it to me autotransportintel at gmail.com that's what industry news is all about i mean this show is current i mean it is tuesday september 25th 2018 uh and we're we're really here it's eight o'clock it's 803 central time so um this is happening we'll talk about my consultations and merch We'll be brief about it, and then I'm going to jump in into the discussion topic. So, if you're, again, if you're new and any of this is just boring you, just skip ahead to 30 minutes, and then you can start into the show. But, of course, if you're live, there's no way to do that. Not yet. We just don't have time hole technology. Um, check to check technology. Okay, and then at 1 o'clock, now at about an hour and a half, we'll be into our featured interview. So, what are we doing tonight? You know what we're doing tonight, guys? is we are going to talk about, um, I created this fancy graphic here, we're going to talk about is the transport software working for you, okay? And I'm going to tell you what I mean, like what's he talking about? You know, well, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to talk about it and I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. So uh, let's get into the live chat. I said I would, I'm a minute late, so here we go. Uh, we got Roxy Auto Transport. Kevin is with us. Welcome back to the show, Kevin. Uh, Trucking Answers Mark is here. What's up, Mark? Thanks for coming back. Here we go. Grant Expeditious Haulers, what's up? We just talked on Instagram. Let's go. 
Uh, Brian the Car Hauler is with us. Welcome back, Brian. I appreciate you coming back. Car Shipper. Okay, this should be an interesting show. I think you're going to like this, Car Shipper. Um, we haven't connected yet, but we uh, we will. I mean, not officially. You haven't been on the show yet. So, Keenan Moore. I'm a new dispatch with car hauling. Been doing uh, types of trucks. I can, well, let's, you know what? So, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. It sounds to me like you could use a consultation, and I'll explain more what that is. Just keep watching. Uh, Miguel Val, MJ Auto Transport. Hey, Miguel, welcome back to the show. Solly Ward is with us. Welcome back. Good evening, Solly. April Ansley, very excited to be here. All right, sounds like your first time here, April. That's cool. DP Dispatch, good evening, everyone. Okay, that's Davison from DP Dispatch. Um, let's see, JJR, good evening. First live show. My name's John, John Doe, a.k.a. John Doe. <laughs> All right, cool, man, liking it. All right, I appreciate you coming in. Kevin Johnson, where to find the software? Oh, Mo Frere, we're about to get to it. There is a lot to talk about, and I'm talking big picture. I'm talking the whole industry. This is going to be really interesting. I'm not just talking about a driver app or a load board. I'm talking about the whole thing. Okay. Wise One DOS, thanks for the email, Jay. You sent me loads in and out of Iowa. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, man. You know, I know there's no sandbox, right, on uh, Central. So if you can, if you need help, let me know. Shoot, it's in the end, it's helping them. It's advertising, and uh, you get to see how it actually works before you sign up. CL Super Sounds, watching from my partner's account. First time watching. All right, welcome, man. Thanks for tuning in, CL. I appreciate it. Chris Wojo, hey, what's up, man? We had a good consultation. I uh, want to know if we can sleep anywhere in our trucks, off-duty, not sleep or berth. I'll tell you what, when you have, this is, this is the perfect tie-in, if you've got a trucking question and you need trucking answers, you need to watch Trucking Answers on YouTube. Mark is talking about freight hauling, trucker. Man, you, if you've got a trucking question, whether it's reefer, dry van, flatbed, um, you want to talk about a company, you want to talk about a rate, a running lane, a regulation, you need to talk to Mark at Trucking Answers on YouTube. Tune in. He's live every Monday at 1 p.m. Um, so let's get it moving. All right. Hey, what's up, Mike? Welcome back to the show. Car Shipio Stan is with us. So Stan is our featured interview tonight. There's, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff even before we get there. But, um, and then we have, Stan and I have a lot to talk about too. We're going to talk a lot of theory, all right? I haven't had Stan on the show in a while, and it's time to talk some serious auto transport software theory. I'm a self-employed dispatcher for the, oh, here we go, for the automotive transport industry. Okay, self-employed dispatcher. All right, so there it is. There's our email address. If you're looking for a dispatcher, so here's the deal. I, I, I've been a dispatcher I'm, you know, I'm kind of phasing out of dispatching. I still dispatch because it keeps me frustrated because uh, the process is just, man, it's just not fun. It is literally harder than making sausage. And we all know you don't want to see sausage being made. Dispatching is brutal, um, but I do do it and I continue to dispatch, but I'm not available for anybody, you know, that comes along now. So if you need a dispatcher, here's an email address. Does anybody know of any good gooseneck RV trailers? All right, here we go. So Grant Expeditious has some questions about trailers. Um, and so if you've got answers, then Grant uh, Grant could really use the help. Hey, what's up, David? Be driving and listening. That's awesome. You know what? We're getting more driving and listening. And when I say we, it's me, dude. I'm the whole show. I do. It is, it's my show. I created it. I make it. And I'm proud of it. So... I really, really appreciate you guys tuning in. I just celebrated 3,000 subscribers this past weekend. By the way, this is show number 52, live show in a row. That means next week, the, the first week of October, celebrates my first show, my first live show of my second consecutive year. Amazing. It's amazing. I can't believe a whole year has gone by. It really has been amazing. Um, and the response is great. You know, it's been kind of steady for quite a while, but something something new is happening now, and it's really, really exciting. Okay, so there we go. That's the live chat. Hello. Oh, man, am I ahead of time? I did hello. Wow, we're going to go to industry news. What's the average rate per mile to haul on a wedge trailer? Okay. Does anybody want to answer that? Um, in fact, 
I'm going to go to, let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do the question of the day. I'm going to jump to the question of the day. Okay. Question of the day is from the moment a shipper decides to move a car to the final completion of that chain of transport logistics, how many times was the information of the car, of the shipper, etc., of that order? How many times was it manually duplicated? All right, there's actually, unfortunately, there's actually, this is a rhetorical question, there's no answer. But when you think about it, and we're going to get into that tonight, how many times does the order information get manually duplicated? And in that, here's your bonus question, which one's worse, losing time or losing accuracy of data? This is a huge problem. And actually, that's why I'm talking about software. Because the only way to manage all this data is through better software. But when you consider how many points from the moment a shipper decides till the time the transport's delivered, seems like it should just be A, B, C. It's not. It's like A, B, C, D, E, F, D, G. You know, anyways. All right, so you guys have the picture. That's what we're talking about. So let's get into the industry news. Oh, we got another, uh, let's see. If anyone's got any power loads for Dually Gooseneck. All right, so here's his email address. Cool. Thank you, April. I appreciate that. It really is... It's exciting, and if, if anybody was here a year ago on that live show, my very first show, live show, I didn't even, I wasn't sure how the camera was working, and I had a square in my face. It's really pretty funny. You guys should go back and watch it and comment like, ha ha, you know, you got the square in your face. Um, by the way, if you haven't done so yet, I, I what I really can use is your like. Please like the show. It helps with my YouTube rankings. Um, that's just one of the statistics that YouTube looks for uh, in the first 24 hours. So please give the show a like. I appreciate it. I uh, heard PJ make some good trailers. I've heard that too. Welcome to the show, Truck and Travel. Um, and what, so what's the average rate per mile? Well, it actually it's regional. It depends on where you are. Um, if you're in the Midwest, per load, let's, let's break it down per car. Uh, 50 cents a mile is pretty average as far as acceptable average. In the Midwest, you're looking more for like 70 cents a mile per car. But in the Northeast, 70 would be your acceptable average. You're really looking for probably like 90 cents a mile per car because of tolls and traffic and volume, etc. Um, but if you're, on, if, you're, if you're hauling a Stinger, 10-car Stinger, then you'd be happy with 40 cents a mile per car because overall, you know, take nine cars of 40 cents a mile 360 a mile that's good now if you equate that over to freight rates and we talk about freight more on this show now if you equate that over to freight rates um that would be better than the going freight rate but is that sustainable over time as some of the i think in the in freight if you're you know if you're bumping docks on a flatbed and you can make just above three dollars a mile or three and a half you could probably get more done and over time maximize your... It's, it's interesting. There's a debate. It's a raging debate. Freight or car hauling. Um, you subscribed on your personal account. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, visit Kaufman Factory in stock and ready to go. Cool. Very cool. You know what? I would love to get a... I would love to visit Kaufman and, and the other trailer manufacturers, shoot some video. That'd be amazing. This happens a lot. I verify everything on every work order I dispatch. It makes their comp mistakes are common on at least one out of three. That's exactly right. And even major, major brokers that come down on you like a ton of bricks, if you don't keep up your end of the deal, give out bad information all the time. Do they know it? And I'm not talking about one of my favorite phrases. You know what my favorite phrase is. Uh, let's see here. Looking for a dispatcher in Texas. Oh, that's pretty cool. So if anybody can help Ryan out, maybe April, maybe if you dispatch Texas. By the way, you know what I say about when you're a dispatcher and you're looking at a new region? It's all just, just cars. You can learn any region. Don't be afraid. Say yes. When, you, when, in, when in sales, say yes. Right? All right, cool. There you go, man. We got business happening. What's up? That is awesome. All right, hey, let's do some industry news. Now I'm late. I knew it. I was. I knew I. I was destined to make myself late on this thing. That's all right. Uh, you can feel the tension. What's he talking about, honey? 
He's talking about he's being late. All right, success don't care. If you're hot and tired, it's only measured by how much you hustle. That's pretty cool. I like memes. You guys know that. If you watch this show, you know I like memes. Here's another meme. Not everybody's meant to be a doctor or a lawyer. Teach your kids that it's okay to work with your hands and build cool stuff. That's a good meme. Let's do another one. Uh, okay, this is more like a poster. Truckers. Work 70 hours. <laughs> Man, I the, it was like a movie theater. Truckers. Okay, I work 70 hours a week. Plus, make sacrifices away from my family. So you can have what you need and want. I deal with rude, disrespectful people out on the road daily. I am overworked and underpaid. The least you can do is show some respect. I'll tell you what. I agree. Um, I hate the way people drive. It makes me crazy. And if the way people drive represents the way people think, act, and talk, oh my gosh, we're in a lot of trouble. Really, man. Everything comes on a truck. Be cool around trucks. I'm telling you. I'm serious. All right, cool. Uh, requires a special license, training, and permits. Its operation is heavily regulated. Versus, can weigh up to 60,000 pounds, exceed 60 feet in length, and a child with a learner's permit can legally operate. <laughs> it's totally true, man. It's crazy, right? That is crazy. Uh, what else am I missing? Here we go. Okay, there we go. Show that. Okay, DP Dispatch. So DP Dispatch is also a dispatcher. Um, and, uh, man, we got, man, we got a fish fry over here. We, we got, we're going to make a movie. Two dispatchers and a car hauler. Okay. <laughs> Bulldog is in the house. What's up? Hey, welcome, Chris. Welcome back to the show. Uh, go Browns. Yeah, man. Uh, love that second meme. Yeah, man, me too. It's a good one. Um, here's one, you know, this one's a bummer, but it's, this is what I'm talking about tonight. All right. So you take off 10% for dispatch, 10%, 20% broker fee, 5% factoring, and then the pay rate's two bucks a mile. Where are you at? By the way, I, want, I was thinking about this because I was watching a lot of broker videos in the last couple days. You know, if brokers are making, they're not making 10%. Dude, they're not. Some are. Brokers are, are 20%. More brokers are in the 15 to 20%. And if you're making 15 to 20% off the top and the dispatcher's making 10% off of the carrier pay, think of the disparity there. Let's see, be a dispatcher or be a broker. Easy, that's an easy call, be a broker. I'm telling you right now. If you like banging your head against the wall and not making a lot of money, dispatching is for you. Okay. All right, what a, you're not a real American trucker till you've taken, <laughs> well, this is a family show. I forgot about this one. Well, might be true though. And truth is truth. I think, I think Jeff Sessions said, or no, the truth is not the truth. All right, anyways. In California, speed limit 60 translates to, if we all go over 80, then we, they can't pull us all over. And I think that's so beautiful. That's pretty funny. All righty, what else we got here? What if Gordon Ramsay voiced a GPS? Great job, you missed the bloody exit, you disgrace. That is hilarious. Oh man. Everybody in your everybody just do your own Gordon Ramsay voice right now. Just do it out loud. Roll the windows down. Nobody rolls windows down, dude. Just put the windows down. Do you roll? No, you don't roll. Okay, so what do we got here? Truck and travel go browns, more of that. Um yeah, man. I'm curious, too. I'm curious. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm in Kansas City. Have you seen the Chiefs lately? Is that the Chiefs? Is that really the Kansas City Ch I can't even believe it. I can't believe it. I stand in front of the TV just in awe. To stop your brakes from sticking this winter, put some oil on your rotors. I'm not even sure if that's a real meme. It's just kind of a... It's, a, it's more of a PSA. Uh, coming soon, a shop near you. The new Harbor Freight tool truck. Ain't that a beaut? <laughs> I had to post that. See, I so you see, you guys, you're going to recognize some of these. Um, did anybody see this one? It's an eye catcher. Huh. Really? Okay. All right, let's keep going before somebody, like, catches us. All right, so what do we got here? Oh, yeah. I hate these. Don't you hate these? All right, here we go. For those of you who don't know what we deal with trying to get your goods to you, here's a great example. 
Think about this for a moment the next time we're interfering with your space on the road or your grocery store. If we stopped moving these goods for three days, it would take three weeks for your life to start to return to normal. And yet here's the sign posted at the dropshipper, right? And nice. Look at that. Just take a second to read that. You hear Gordon Ramsay in your head, and if you're a minute late, you still pay a light fee. We do not, <laughs> we do not accept cash credit cards. We only accept. Okay, wait. So it starts by telling you if you're a minute late, you owe a hundred bucks, and then they go into forms of payment. You may owe a fee for pallets, and that's paid separately, and you must pay the fees or reschedule. Holy mackerel! What is this? I'm telling you, man, it's it's an unbelievable, unbelievable. Speaking of unbelievable, that's unbelievable. I think that's interesting. Oh, here, you can't read yet. Making my family. You know, I so what it is, I think what this is, right? You seen Calvin pissing all over everything? Well, what if Calvin, I don't know, had butterflies coming out of his butt? Maybe that'd be... Anyways, this one is the... This one is, I guess if you've had enough of those long stick figure families i guess you get this one so here you go and you're a bad person so there you go and scene on a gl450 no less okay okay here's a real this one came from uh this one came from i believe i believe melissa at griffo shared this okay i asked them for more money and they said no they couldn't pay any more when i got the load assigned i, I just had to cancel all right so the total payment to carrier 1200 Undelivered carrier, the carrier owes the broker 1384. Like I said, we're not talking 10%. In fact, this is like, what is that, 110%? That's what they mean by giving 110%. <laughs> Jeez, man. That's just, that's egregious. A bad person. A bad Pearson. Um, what else? What did I miss? Um, cool. All right. Not too much. Not too much. But if I miss you, you know, I'm sorry. All right, cool. Um, but that's that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And actually, I had that happen too. And I had to call. I ended up, I got a call. I got a phone call from the manager of a pretty big brokerage cussing me out, telling me that, you know, there's no need for me to go off on if his sales guys are so spectacular. Well, you know, then they should be properly rewarded. And I said, well, listen, if you're such a genius... Can't you figure out a way so the carrier doesn't know how much you're ripping him off? Come on, man. Have your have your customer who do whatever it takes. Just keep the thirteen hundred bucks to yourself. Don't show that to the carrier. What do you? What's the matter with you? All right. What do we got here? Oh yeah, this is pretty funny. Uh the customer reported massive scrapes and damage under the car. And we will share all documentation as it's received. Please send your BAL so we may begin our investigation. Please speak with your driver to learn what may have occurred. And if you have any pictures on file, please share those as well. Thank you for your professionalism and best regards. Okay, all right, fair enough. It's a, it's a nice, but okay, why did I read it like I was, you know, having crumpets? Because massive scrapes and damage under the car... I don't know, man. Really? Is that? I real we re, we all realize. And this is a real I didn't this isn't this didn't come to me and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to pull anything, although we're gonna get a call later which will tie into this, which is funny. But I mean uh you know, do do you do you guys crawl under the car and do the do your bill of lading? I don't think so. With your headlamp and, and your miners poles? Okay. Please call the student department to see if they found a student that can run a manual. Right? Because I guess they don't have an employee that can do it. Okay. Uh, this is a message from eModal. And the message is, and I want to thank Sean from Ocean Roads for sharing this. So if your um, if your truck, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go to the port and uh, I guess manage a load to or from the port, then your truck has to be model year 2014 or newer. You guys see that? Oh, thanks. Yeah, because there isn't, there's not, there's just not enough regulations. We just, you know, I mean, and, and there's school buses driving around with freaking black clouds blowing everywhere. But, you know, the, the car hauler, the trucker, well, we got it. We got a, 
we got to buckle down on this guy. Have you seen those school buses? It's insane. You got kids on the bus and you're and they're leaving hunks of coal on the road. It's insane, dude. Okay. Uh, here's an email from uh, this is from Jerry Jeremy Halleck, United Road. Look, check this out, man. If you want to haul Teslas for a thousand bucks, go ahead and read that for a second. Um, oh, Grant is looking for a flatbed, forty-eight foot or fifty-three foot. Yeah, bust out the portable. <laughs> I know, dude. Oh my God, it's crazy. Uh, oh yeah, dude. If you guys can give each other positive feedback, do that, man. Share the likes. There's plenty to go around. No one knows what is behind these numbers. Example: Shipper owes broker money. Uh, well, uh, you know what? And I, I do love a good counter argument. The thing is that I've seen it. As I said, I personally, I moved a car. I don't remember the exact numbers. It was many, many a year ago. Uh, but I do remember the conversation and the manager cussing me out because uh, I'm just a dispatcher and what business is it of mine? And it's a good thing I didn't share the numbers with a customer. But it was like we moved, I think, a truck for 800 and I, I asked for more money because it was a big truck and I was, I was able to squeeze like another 50 bucks out of them. We get on delivery and the driver is going to collect 1500 I'm like, D what? Okay. So anyways... I was a loss for words. All right, here you go. So there's your, and I talked during the, I didn't really feel like reading all that. So um, I don't know why I put this in here. But I'll tell you what, there are a lot of numbers to pay attention to. And there was a guy on Facebook. There's some interesting Facebook groups talking about rates per mile. Now, most of that is freight. Um, there's not as much in car hauling. And I'll tell you what, when that changes, I hope to be a part of it. There are numbers, but... All right, well, let's move into the fun stuff. This is a ton of bricks. All right, good times. And what else we got here? How are we doing time-wise? Ooh, ooh, I'm behind. We got a uh, hood of a car. That's nice. What else we got here? Oh, we got a... Uh, that's just bad. I think that was the truck. Okay? Man, that's bad, dude. Um, That's... Wow, that's even worse, dude. That's what you get for, you know... Whipping in front of a freight liner like it's nothing. Okay. Have a good time with that. Um, that would be... I don't know what happened there. It was either black ice or down a mountain. Probably black ice. Otherwise, there'd be rocks everywhere. Um, that would be... Oh, that's interesting. That's in uh, Yellowstone, I think. Yeah, Yellowstone. That's pretty cool. Um, and then... <laughs> this is kind of funny. Is that, you know... You get those trucks with the high beams. I've had it. I drive a car. I get the trucks in my rear window. They're literally like trying to park on my rear windshield. And I wish I had that set up. So that we could, you know. Yeah. Okay, and then this is interesting. There's a sign here. Slow down because the cop hides behind the sign. Uh, that's hilarious. I love a good street sign. Don't you guys? Okay, what else we got here? Um, oh, and then here's a... Uh, this is, uh, I think it was Tampa PD on the phone. That's good. That's good. Probably making a call that they need to enforce more uh, people on the phone. Um, hey, what's up, Dave? Sergeant Schill, what's up? What else we got here? Um, check out. Uh, Let's see what do we got here okay good we got that's good oh we got flip flaps <laughs> okay i don't even know i mean that somebody's just bored or you know i don't know um and then somebody uh you don't see that very often that there that there's a major hazard I, that i'm surprised he's still on the road but you know why not what else we got here you guys see these things on the road send them to me Oh, yeah, don't worry, Bobby. It's break check week, not load securement week. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's a great caption. I love that. That's just funny. Um, what else we got? Is that a yak in the road? Yeah, it was a buffalo. Buffalo, yak. Um, okay, here's what this is what I call a mix mix. This is a real mix mix. You want to see a real mix mix? That's your mix mix. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I thought, I like this. This is what, it's interesting. We talk about hot shotting. And a hot shot, 
car hauler, you know, a hot shot car hauler. You're throwing the cars on. Uh, it's a smaller trailer, and it's usually a quick run. Something needs to be rushed, or you know. Th Anyways, well, in freight, this is what hot shotting looks like. So it's interesting how, and, and you in freight, you have a hot shot hauler that mixes freight and cars, just like on that mix mix. But I found that it, found that really interesting, and in that in the in the specific definition of hot shot. It's usually a rush. It's like, you know, you've got to be on call, you know. Uh, you know, it's like an Uber. It's like, you got to be, a, you know, you got to be ready to go. All right, this is a smart car that was parked smart. All right, and then what else we got here? Oh, this is a picture of a lady trucker. That's pretty cool. That went around on Facebook, you know. It was like, people were like, you go, girl, and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, I'm celebrating it. I'm celebrating it. I don't have anything negative to say. I think it's cool. Oh, by the way, this is, if you are in a 10-car stinger, this is how you see the streetlights. Keep that in mind. So, hey, people out on the road, pulling in front of trucks, having Freightliners drive over you, think about that one. How would you like to know the streetlight by looking at your hood? I think you got it so easy. Um, and also, another one for the residential drivers out there. If you see cones, don't go through them. That guy's going to unload that truck. He doesn't want to die. There's no need to, no need to die over your Venza. <laughs> um, this is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool POV shot from uh, Max Auto Hauler. Paul sent me that. I like that. Enclosed trailer. Looking real good, man. Bike parked in front of the car. Looking good. And I think I got one more. Oh, oh this is a fridge. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Who wants a uh, Who wants a Peterbilt fridge? I do. I'll take one of those. That's pretty cool. Um, and then, oh, and there we go. There's our final shot. Interesting picture. Real interesting. Um, everyone, give Pull Dog a positive rating on Central. Yeah, I agree with that, man. It's hard enough out there. Ryan, I'm new to car hauling. I had four cars last week. Did six to your hundreds five days. Dang, that's great, man. Wow. Good job, Denny. That's awesome. I mean, that's a hustle. That's really good. Okay, that is the end of that. So let's see, what do we got here? So let's do, we did industry news. Oh, you know what, real quick. Just talking about my consultations and merch. Um, you know that if you, if you know, if like, if you need a dispatching, you need a solid hour to talk about dispatching principles or getting into car hauling, uh, a one-hour consultation. I'm telling you, I've given, I've done many of these now. Every single one, I can tell there's a real benefit there. You can read my Facebook reviews, and um, we'll, I mean, we, we'll go into steps of car hauling. Um, I'll give you the improving highway safety document from the FMCSA. We'll talk about strategy, profitability, route planning, load board searches, suggestions, referrals. I mean, I'm emailing you. It's crazy. It really is awesome. But if you are brand new and you know nothing about this industry, you might want to go with the Greenhorn. I've done a couple of those as well. I mean, people that were like, do I want to get into trucking? Yeah, that's that's a Greenhorn. Um, now, if you want to help this channel, you know you can get a Mix Mix. I want to make sure you call it the Mix Mix. And you're going to get this t-shirt. I know that every time I, every time I show, the shirt is so bright, the light goes dark. It's crazy. So that's the back of the shirt. But this is a road worker yellow, and uh, this is a great shirt. Um, there's a picture of Dave. Oh, yeah, let's show that picture. Um, I'll, I'll show that in a second here. Um, and uh, actually, let me just pull that up right now. Yeah, great picture of Dave with this shirt. Let's see it here. Um, let's move that out of the way. Yeah, there's the shirt. That's a great shirt. So, got to get more of these out there. I think you will be seeing more of these shirts. That's the Auto Transport Intel road worker yellow t-shirt all right thank you so much dave for that picture i do appreciate it came out awesome and then i got business cards we'll do a phone consultation and if you do the vip again this money is to help the channel and you get some merchandise you can get the auto transport intel mug all right so you get a mug and a shirt and some business cards i'll set you up with some business cards and then if you do the VIP, I'll definitely have you on the show in the future. And if you're in Kansas City, let's make a video. Let's have some barbecue. Um, let's do this thing. So um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah, and I'm going to be in Joplin 
Friday at a truck show. What is it, the Chrome Mafia? So that's going to be pretty interesting. All right, so we are now into the meat of the show. Let's move that. Thank you, Dave. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so is the software working? Okay, man, what are we talking about? See, I told you, I'm, 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 I'm just a few minutes late. What time is it? 8.35? Okay, so I'm five minutes late on my show already. But that's okay, it's my show. And um, yeah, it's, it's very sexy, Dave. Uh, that shirt really does look good on you, Dave. It's awesome. So it fits great. Um, what are we talking about? Let's take a look at that graphic again. Because when I, when I do a show, you guys know that I like to try to put together a theme. All right? And this, th this week, the theme is, is the transport software working? So let's take a look at this. What am I talking about? All right. Well, I made a list. You know that I like to make these lists and um you know have a commentary so here we go here's the here's the here's the rundown all right what happens first what's the first thing that happens in auto transport and that is that a customer puts their information into a lead form to get a quote online let's take a look at that let's take a look at what i'm talking about let's say you are a uh here's my site Hey, you're a customer, all right? You go to Google. This is Google right now, right? And you type in car shipping, all right? Car shipping. And what do I get? I get companies telling me they can ship my car, and there's ads, and best in the universe, and most spectacular, and smartest, and all this stuff, right? Okay? So, oh, here, hang on one second. Let's change that up. Okay, so basically a customer comes here and, all right, they're going to click on one of these. Which one am I going to click on? I mean, it's anybody's guess. I'm probably going to click on something on the first page. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm going to click on that one. Why not? They said number one. I got all excited. You know, I'm already high-fiving or making flights and all that stuff. All right, so what do I do? I'm going to put my information in here. Okay, what's your vehicle? Origin city, state, zip, destination city, state, zip, year, make, model, get my free instant estimate. It's only going to cost $20 to go around the universe by the smartest people ever. All right, that's cool. Wow, great. Wow, this is sure is easy, honey. All right, so I put my information into a lead generation form. And what happens to that information? A broker gets the lead. Now, is it the broker that I think I'm dealing with here? Maybe. Is this lead being sold to another broker? Probably. Is it being sold to a bunch of brokers? How many brokers is it sold to? Ask a car shipping customer. All right. But when that happens, my point here is, uh, is that that information it could either be manually duplicated or it could take place in a CRM where all the data that the customer put in, the integrity of the data remains and it goes through a customer relations management tool or maybe it's copied to a spreadsheet or it's sent through email. But basically that shipper lead goes to a broker. There's already an opportunity for something to get mistyped created wrong, wrong zip code. It's already started and we got a long ways to go. Okay. So the broker posts the load on the load board. Now, what do they use to post it? Well, let's go back to our, uh, let's go back to our neat thing here. Well, we know about J tracker. Everybody knows about J tracker, right? What's J tracker? J tracker is the software that uh, is most commonly used when posting a load to central dispatch. All right, so the broker uses J Tracker, and um, they put the information in. Now here's the here's the funny part. When they, where is my cursor? All right, hang on. Where to go? All right. So when they put the load into the load board, did the is that information copied from the CRM? Did it come straight from the lead generator site? Probably not. The chances are not that good. 
the chances are extremely high that it's already been copied once, maybe twice, maybe re-entered twice. This is a load board, this is a marketplace, it's an email list, this is where the broker is letting carriers know about the load. We're not, not to mention the money cut, but the, the data itself is maybe not perfect anymore. Maybe not. And yet, we're, we're not even halfway there. Okay, now the broker has assigned, or rather hasn't assigned it yet, but sends it to a dispatcher that calls about the load on the load board, or off the email, or in the marketplace, right? And they get the dispatch, it's unsigned, but they have a dispatched shipment, it's in their dispatched to me on central dispatch, right? And the broker has given it to the dispatcher. Now, probably everything is fine be between the posted order and the dispatch shipment, probably. But the real problems already have happened. If there's chance for mistyping, lost time, uh, whatever it is, somebody new, somebody having a bad day, whatever, it's already, it's already happened. All right, we're, we're still only halfway through the process. And in this process, think about all the lost time and lost money to the carrier. Because if the shipper started with a web page entering their information and we get to the bottom of this whole screen, why, you, well, everything that happened has a cost associated and time and the potential to lose information. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's have fun. All right, so the dispatcher accepts the load from the broker, and now the dispatcher needs to get it to the carrier. Well, not every dispatcher works in-house at every carrier. How does the dispatcher get the information to the carrier? This is another perfect opportunity to get the wrong information. So you get customer got the wrong information to the broker, broker got the wrong information to the dispatcher, dispatcher gets the wrong information to the carrier. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, so there's a new dispatch to the driver. Now maybe the dispatcher gave the information to the carrier and the carrier has to give it to the driver. Maybe the dispatcher's not in touch with the driver. Another opportunity to get the information wrong. More time, more cost, more waste, and more loss. Oh man, somebody make a bumper sticker. Time, cost, waste, loss. All right, so, all right, so let's keep going. It's crazy. All right, so now the driver has the information and maybe at this point, maybe if we're lucky, the broker up here at the top put the information into their CRM, which put it into their um, dispatched shipment board and then assigned it to a driver. I gotta tell you, this is why when you look at like, when you look at systems like Ready Logistics, probably best example of a broker that uh, not only gives you the information through their system, but the dealer entered the information initially and therefore nobody else really touched it the biggest problem is nobody can talk about the information there's no phone there's nobody you can talk to what like you can't call i've tried you can't call anybody and talk to them about that information so again is the software working i don't think so um there are different solutions happening but overall no i don't think it's working um and i'm i'm, I'm showing you all the ways it may not be working because then the driver delivers the shipment by the way what how'd they do their bol did they do it electronic did they do it paper you know a lot of people would be like what's it what's an epod electronic uh proof of delivery okay well what kind of proof do we have um shoot man you go to Mannheim. you can't you can only write on the back of the gay pass there's there isn't even an electronic thing anywhere unless you take a picture and what is that just a picture uh and your invoice so you got all these papers flowing ar flowing around people are still talking about mail people are still talking about fax machines that's hilarious no other industry is still talking about fax machines um and so now the driver okay so now we're going to go back around the circle the driver 
gets the information back to the carrier, hopefully it's still correct, and the carrier now needs to bill it to the broker. And they get the completed report, BOL, invoice, um, and goes from carrier billing to broker billing, maybe back to the shipper, um, probably because the broker is going to go to the shipper for ultimately for the money. Look at all those steps. And it's not all internal. There's, an, I, I don't even know of a software that'll do all of it. If you guys do, let me know. Um, there are, there are soft, there are software, there is software that's close, but, um, and this is what we're going to talk to Stan about. Stan is going to be our expert within the, uh, within the major companies that are working on this. Um, I think Stan is representative of talking theory about it. By the way, within all this, here are the pieces that have to remain intact. Okay, there's a broker-carrier agreement. That started way up near the top. That should be attached to the order. Could be, maybe, probably. I mean, it needs to be there in, in the ultimate, in the billing with the terms, right? Then the BOL itself and the pictures and then releases, gate passes, receipts. So all this information flowing or flying around the cab <laughs> like it's that, uh, that paper lottery with a air blower in there. So... Exactly. I know. That's why I've got you on the show, Stan. And it's cool. Um, Stan and I have we have we haven't talked hardly at all in, in months. And so to have him back on the show to talk about this stuff is really cool. Um all right. So there is to me that's the setup. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about all these steps and not only the time lost, but the loss of information and if you're a carrier and you want to start hanging on to more of the money, you should want to know what software is going to help you essentially become the broker. That's where you want to be. Because if, the bro if you've got a broker doing step two up here and then posting the load and, and getting it and then the dispatcher, you are missing out. What was that number? I think it was... That on the thing it said ten to twenty percent. Let's look at that number. Uh, let me pull that up here because this show is about the car hauler. All right, I'm not here to I'm not here to to get more dispatch business. That's why I say I am a dispatcher, but that's not what this show is for. This show is not here to get me more business. Um, and I, yeah, I do advertise my consulting and I do get, um, I do I make a small amount from consulting. Believe me, it's not, it's not enough to just do it full time. But this show is to talk about what needs to change in this industry. There's a lot that needs to change to put the power back into the carrier's hands. Because if you talk to a broker about carrier rates, about carriers complaining about their rates, and again, I, I'm not here to complain about brokers. It's part of the ecosystem. But things do change over time. McDonald's now does have robots in the lobby where you can order your food instead of talking to a person. That is kind of the future. It's going to happen. I am here to help people, and I am here to help tell you, you got to get into this 10 to 20% broker fee. You have to. Because when asking for another 25 or 50 bucks off of what the customer is paying is not, that's not the answer. That's not how you're going to stay in business. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. And now what we're going to do is, I got a couple calls. Let's go to, um, what are we going to do here? First, let's talk to Dave. Let's talk to Dave. Oh, hey, man. What's up, Dave? We got that. All right, let's move this stuff around. Oh, by the way, this photo is from Troy Dalcor. I pulled it off of, uh, I pulled this photo off of Facebook. Hey, how you doing? Um... I like that photo. If you got a photo that you think should be on the show, uh, send it to me. Autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I'll tell you what, 
the kinds of photos I'm looking for, see how on the left it's close and then on the right it's far away. I like that depth of field. I'm a big fan of depth of field. So if you've got a photo featuring depth of field and car hauling, honey, what's he talking about? All right, so let's go talk to Dave, man. Um, this should be pretty fun. I, I do dispatch for Dave. Um, Dave's got some car hauling stories, some war stories to share with us. And we do uh, Facebook Live dispatching on um, occasionally, eh, every other week, something like that. See if we can pick him up on the audio here. By the way, how's the audio? Everything good? Hope I got him. I might be a little early, Dave. Actually, I think I am. I think did I say nine o'clock? Thank you for calling Clarksville Trucking. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dave. Hey, Dave, call me back. Um. So yeah, we'll talk. Let's. That's cool. We'll we'll stay in the chat here for a minute. I'm totally cool with that. What do you guys think of uh, what this, uh, I call this lead load data flow? What do you guys th think of this? Does it make sense? Um, and, oh, there you are, Viper. We're going to talk to you, too. Live for life. Live for life. Live for live. Um, what else we got? Carrier network is always a plus. Yeah, I agree. Love the carrier. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you okay, you agree? Okay, cool. I agree with your estimate that 25 to 30 of the top dollar amount is lost between these three. Ooh, thank you, Stan. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, cut out to broker. Well, I know. You can't totally cut them out. And I'm not saying we do. I, but I'm, I'm not sure what I'm saying. That's why I'm here. I don't know what I'm talking. No. I know, I know what I'm talking about of the pieces. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. Um... Can't believe how some carriers can dispatch themselves with lots of things to manage. I can't either. I cannot either. But I mean, you know, the audio is stellar. Oh, cool, man. Thank you. Is it a little loud? I get loud. I start talking loud. I start talking nonstop. You know, let's see if we can reach Dave here. Let's try him again. And if we can't reach Dave, we'll go to one of our other calls and we'll come back to Dave because I'm doing a few calls tonight before we get to Stan. We are going to talk to Stan, but we're going to do a few calls first kind of crank up uh we're gonna we're gonna stir up the industry water you know what i'm saying who wants to stir up some water with me who's with me okay all right i'm gonna have to call dave back that's fine that's no problem thank you for calling Clarksville. all right dave all right dave i'm gonna call you back what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to all right first all right so it's i'm mixing it up first i'm going to Vinny. Okay, so much for planning. <laughs> well, no, I was ahead. I, I, I budgeted 30 minutes for the lead data flow chart. Uh-oh, and there's Clarksville. Well, well, dang it. Okay, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to do. All right, I'm going to call Dave back. <laughs> Welcome to dispatch. This is what it's like dispatching. All right. This is what it. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. Oh, come on. Hey, Dave. Hey, man. I think the rain got in the AT&T tower. It's been raining here for about five days now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, on the way to Indianapolis yesterday. It poured all day long. Dude, that's not good. It quit when I it quit when I got the end of the apple but it rained all the way there. What's going on, man? Well, you know me. I'm just talking to the camera and trying to put a show together and talking to the people and you know. How's that? How's that working out for you? Oh, and one never knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can I help you? Well, you know what? It's funny. Is that on the one hand, I hate it when we have problems, but on the other hand, I'm like, ooh, that's going to be great for the show. We have problems? 
Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought everything was perfect. It, well, it is because dispatching is easy peasy. Yeah, so is driving. Oh yeah, driving's cake. And yeah, we got it made, man. That's why brokers deserve twenty percent. It's everything else is so easy. Twenty percent. They make more like sixty percent. I know. It feels like it, doesn't it? it no, it's the truth. Ah uh, man. Hey. Hey, I, I, I'm just caught in the middle. I'm just a, you know, uh, I'm a bird on a wire. The pivot man. <laughs> I'm the pivot man. Well, um, what was I going to say? So, well, what happened today? Let's talk about, <laughs> I mean, I hate to, I hate to talk about it because it makes me look bad, but you know what? I got to take my lumps. What happened this morning? Well, not a whole lot. I got up about... I don't know, 5 o'clock, had a cup of coffee and headed to Nashville. And, of course, the traffic going to Nashville is always standstill. So I got to Mannheim, and everybody and their brother decided to go to Mannheim, too. So it took two hours to unload four cars. Oh, my God. That, and then that's a, and that's a, by the way, that's a real number. Two hours to deliver four cars at the same location, right? Correct. That's a real number. Yeah, sir. You know, like... Well, I mean, you get in line and there's like 12 or 14 cars in front of you. You know, you got to sit there while they go through each little bitty step on every car, you know? I mean, it, you know, it's like the guy... Because we're going to get to the the resident we talked to. He had no idea when I talked to him. I'm sure he was all peaches when you talked to him. When I talked to him, oh, yeah. he, he had no idea why I can't tell him a time. And I'm like, I, you know... I don't know what to tell you, man. I, well, you gotta, you need to watch my show, because you're telling me your day started with a two-hour delivery time at, a, at an at an auto auction, which sounds like it should be easy peasy. It normally is, but for some reason today they were super busy. I don't know, you know what what the deal was, but they were covered up. And of course, you know, you sit in line with one car, and it probably takes I don't know seven to nine minutes to get up there and then they check you in and you park the car and then it takes you six to seven minutes to walk back all the way to the transport lot to get to your truck you get in the second car and back it down and drive it over and then wait seven to ten minutes and then park it and walk all the way back to your truck in the transport lot and then the time you get back the second time you got to hit your oxygen bottle a few times because you can't breathe <laughs> <laughs> then you get your third car and you repeat that step 14, you know, 14, 15 minutes each time, and, you know, you eat up time before you know it. Yeah, that's believable. All right, so so there you are. You, d you deliver at the Mannheim. Now what time is it, and what do you got to do next? Uh, it's, uh, let's see, what time was it? I got to Mannheim at 7.40. I got out of Mannheim at, I don't know, it was like 9.50, something, almost 10 o'clock, so then I had to go fill up. Well, it takes about... 30 minutes or so, 40, 30 to 45 minutes to get 130 gallons of fuel, stand in line behind a bunch. <laughs> okay. By the way, you're now and your ELD is just clicking away, right? Oh, uh, did I lose you? Is that AT and T? You got water in the pipes again? All right, well he'll come back. So, um, <laughs> station identification. Maybe we should go to uh, you know what we should do while we're waiting. Let's let's do a word from Market Trucking Answers. What's going on, Jay? That's Jay, right? And we should mention that's Jay from Auto Transport Intel. Jay runs a live show on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on YouTube. You should check it out. Jay does everything car hauling. That stuff I don't know anything about, but Jay knows everything about it. So if you want to haul cars, that seems like it'd be interesting. Hauling all these different kind of cars like Ferraris and uh, probably a bunch of used cars from auto auctions. Whatever it is, whatever makes the money, go check out Jay at 8 p.m. tomorrow on YouTube. I'm there too, right, watching uh, the show. So it's pretty fascinating. Two, three hours. He brings industry experts in and everything, right? So love it. Well, thank you, Mark. That was super nice. A um, little station identification there. And, um, and I highly, like I said earlier, man. I highly encourage you check out um, check out Trucking Answers with Mark on YouTube. Great show. All right, let's see what else we got here. Hey, we got water in the pipes? Yeah, in the tower. 
I feel like JD now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I guess we'll uh, we'll just do what, we'll do the best we can. This is a lot. It's a lot like car hauling, you know. Well, if I lose, if I lose you again, I'm gonna go eat pizza. <laughs> if I yeah, well, I'll tell you what. If I lose you again, don't sweat it. You know, we'll just pizza sounds good. I'll take some pizza. I like cowboy pizza. There you go. Yeah. So cow patty. So <laughs> so <laughs> so there. So now you're okay. After you get fuel, you hit. You got to go to. America's auto option. All right. Uh, dealer's auto option. And you got to load up four. Right, and it's 66 miles away, so that took about 45 minutes to an hour to get over there. And then when I got there, they didn't have my gate passes, so I had to go up front and stand in line to get gate passes and then walk another quarter mile back to the guard shack and then find out where my cars were. And then I walked another quarter mile to get my first car and then a quarter mile to get my second car and a quarter mile to get my third car and then a quarter mile to get my fourth car. Before you know it, it's 12 o'clock. Wow, man. And yeah, delivery time at lunchtime. Right. So what's our so our biggest problem <laughs> now is that you got to deliver at lunchtime. Exactly. Does anybody yeah, anybody in the audience know what we're talking about delivering at lunchtime? If you watched if what if if people watched our Facebook live last week, they would know what lunchtime is. Drivers don't get lunchtime. Yeah, exactly. You know what? But you know who does? Lunchtime. People that work at lunchtime. <laughs> so, so you we call it lunchtime because they close at two, which is, what is that, man? What's two o'clock? Who closes at two o'clock? Lunchtime. Lunchtime. Okay. So, so all right. So since it's twelve, so you're loaded at twelve in Nashville. Lunchtime in Memphis closes at lunchtime. What's the point of driving to Memphis, right? Yeah, you can't. So you drive an hour and 30 minutes back home when you go there in the morning. Right. So tomorrow morning you're headed to lunchtime. Yeah, about daylight. Are you going to make it before lunchtime? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there about 10 o'clock. All right. So and I talked to your or my customer, the customer, and I called him at first. Well, he called me back, and, and then he called me back. You know, I couldn't get to it, so... I called him back, and he answered the phone, and, he, and I told him who I was and what I was doing. He said, well, what time are you going to be here? I said, about lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, what? Oh, man, we lost Dave right there. Oh, he's got to call me back. Here, I'll do this. Um, let's see here. <laughs> He's got to call me back. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Um, anybody have any questions? Anybody know what lunchtime is? I still... I, I, it's like the mix mix. All right, fine. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to tell you... I'm going to tell you who closes at lunchtime. Um, because it's so frustrating to haul cars for a company that won't accept cars at the end of lunchtime they literally don't like you know that carvana carvana you got to get there i think by four which that's early but lunchtime oh my gosh they're serious they go home at two o'clock they don't accept deliveries after two o'clock so all right well fine you know what if you're going to close at lunchtime i'm going to start calling you lunchtime i even said it to the broker <laughs> and he thought it was kind of he, you know he had to do one of those like I don't really want to laugh laughs which are usually pretty funny alright Dave where's your uh, I want to hear what he said about the customer because I talked to the customer yeah man it's a blow mix mix um, thank you Andy I, I just can't get enough mix mix I really can't I, I mean, you know I did make that mix mix candy did you guys see that let's see if I can find that since we're having fun um let's do this let's do all right let's do um while we're waiting on dave we'll go ahead and pull up uh this image that i found and i'm pretty sure it's real um oh there's dave well let's go ahead and pull that up here 
Mix Mix Candy. This is Billy Joe. Hello? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello, radio. I just was, uh, I was killing time. I was, show, I, I, can you hear me? I ain't never. I was just, I was killing time and I was showing, I was showing everybody the Mix Mix Candy. Oh, man, he, yeah, his phone's messed up. Well, Dave, if you can call back, that'd be great. What about the auctions that closed 1130? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, remind me, because I know there's some. Well, how about, how about this, April? How about the auctions that um, um, say, yeah, no, that's auction day. Can You, you got to come a different day. Like, what are you talking about? What? We're not like just stopping by. It's not like we're just shopping for shoes. Dude, we got to go we got to go on Tuesday. That's the day we're going to be there. We don't just drive around with cars wondering which day's better for y'all. Man, I'm I'm just driving around in circles eating mix mix candy. <laughs> that's crazy. Oh man, the mix mix. I mean, and that's what's so fun. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Cuz what's a mix mix? It's a candy. Next time, just say, "Hey, can I get some of that mix mix candy?" I don't really want to. I don't want to get the. I don't. I'm not looking for a load. I just want some candy. Well, they'd be like, "What? What are y'all talking about?" All right. Well, you know what? We can't get Dave on the phone, which is a drag. I wanted him to finish that uh, the story. Um, but you know, I mean, hey, man, the weather is as the weather does, so there's nothing we can do. Um. Oh, Auto Nation closes five hours. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the kind of auction I'm talking about. Where, like, but I mean, there are Mannheims and Odessas. I know there was an uh, there was an auto auction in Florida. It was either like Central Florida Auto Auction or Mannheim Orlando, and they were like, yeah, no, you can't pick up on Wednesdays. That's auction day. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, so what? So it's auction day. You mean you guys haven't figured out? That'd be like, yeah, no, you you can't, well, you can't you go to the grocery store. Hey, sir, you're gonna need to leave. Uh, we're restocking the shelves uh, all day, and so you can't buy groceries today. Now get out of here. You just go ahead and run on along. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, hey, what's up, Eric? Thanks for joining the show. Um, I appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, we lost Dave. He's his phone is just jacked. So he's, he's going to go get his pizza. So let's do this. Let's go to, um, I got, who who's next? Who's, is it going to be Viper or is it going to be, let's talk to John. Let's do that. Oh, that's at 930. I'm way ahead, John. It's all right. And hey, listen, guys, if you want to, um, Oh my goodness. All right, let's try Vinny. This is crazy. If somebody want if you want to join the show, go ahead and uh since we're, you know, we got extra time here. Um if you want to join the show, you can email me autotransportintel@gmail.com and, you know, send me, you know, what you want to talk about, uh your phone number, etc. And you know, we'll see. Depends on what happens here, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try and get Vinny on the phone. This is pretty funny. Yeah, good job, Jay. You made it to a year, but you don't know how to run a phone. Well done. Let's see. Here. Okay. Oh man, is it mine? Oh no. Oh, I don't have any service. Are you kidding me? Well, I'll tell you what, and that is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen. I've, I'm the one that lost service. Wow, that's crazy. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Hey, Stan, we'll come back. Well, I have to come back to calls. So, Stan, or I'll tell you what. Let's try this. Here's an idea. Let's see if we can finish on the cell. This is how we do Facebook Live. Let's try that. This ought to be, this ought to be interesting. Hey, man, you got to adjust this car hauling. See if we can finish up this story. I've never seen such a delay. I can't believe it. Hello? Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm just not a whole lot 
showers now, that's for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, you know what's weird is I've got, I got a no service thing on my phone now. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know what it is. It, well, it's, the rain here, I think, is what's done it. Must have got rain inside the cable or something. Well, that's crazy. So what I what I'm what I'm seeing is I'm doing the. Uh, I hear you. I've got the cell phone up, kind of like when we do Facebook Live, and I don't I don't think the audio is as good. Oh wait a minute. Here, let's move this. Let's try it. See if I can make it a little better. Anyway, so finish your story if you would. You could you talk to the test. You talk to the guy. What happened? Yeah, he wanted to know what time I was going to be there. You with me? Yeah. And I told him, I said, about lunchtime. And he said, well, what time is that? I said, about noon. And uh, he said, well, you, you, you can't give me an exact time. I said, well, I'm driving four hours. I said, so it depends on if traffic is moving, if we have any accidents. I said, there's a lot of variables between here and there. I said, all I can do is text you when I get close. He said, well, you may not be able to get me. I said, well, then I'll go load my other three cars, and if I don't hear back from you, I'm, I'm going to take them to Nashville. Which kind of telling him that, you know, you, you mess around and your damn car's going to be sitting there because I don't give a damn. Uh-oh. So... Well, no, I, didn't, I didn't say it like that. I was nice to him, but, but he's trying to play the play to, play to well, I'm busy. Well, guess what? I'm busy, too. I said, if I can't get you, I'll just go load my other three cars, and if I don't hear back from you before I get them loaded, I'll take them to Nashville. So I bet he'll be paying attention. Yeah. Well... I, I know that he was saying to me that his biggest problem was that, and this is where, you know, we get the constraints. We get these big constraints. We get this, well, we're not going to take cars after lunchtime constraint. And then this guy gives me a constraint that, okay, well, I've got to take somebody to the airport at 2.30, so I'm not available after that constraint. And well, i gotta go, I got to go through the worst scale in the United States uh, to get there. I know. You were telling me You were telling me about this. Now, did, yeah, that's the I-40 West scale, and they don't play. Yeah. You guys know that scale? Hey, what's up, Salam? We've got another... Uh, we've had several uh, first-time viewers in the in the live chat today. Well, Anyway, i got to go through the most, the, one of the most comprehensive scales in the eastern United States, and it's I-40 West. And they don't play. I mean, they pull you in there just to just to talk to you. You know, it, it could take 20 minutes. It could take 45. It could take an hour. You know, who knows? Wow. That's harsh, man. They have pulled me in there and said, oh, you was just inspector last week. Go ahead and roll. I'm like, all right, thanks. See you. Oh. So it all depends on the, the officer, you know? These are the guys that gave you that sticker. Is no, that... that's the... That's oh. the uh, 65 South scale or the I-65 North scale. All Tennessee scales are tough. Don't come through Tennessee with some dumb stuff or they're going to hammer your ass. <laughs> Tennessee's got tough scales. I don't know what it is. Tennessee State Troopers got chips on their shoulder. That's uh, that's probably the best information on the show tonight. Yeah, they're tough. All Tennessee scales are tough. When you come 65 South out of Kentucky... The Portland scale is another terrible scale. And when you come, as soon as you enter into Tennessee, you're in a scale, period. It don't matter. And they do not play. I, I have heard, I've actually, I've heard that about the Kentucky scale. That it's, uh, not bad. well, the one you're talking of, like I've heard, and I've heard even like south of Indy, isn't there, is there one around Scottsburg or something like that? Uh, yeah, but it's closed right now. Oh, okay. That's good. They're doing road construction. Well, maybe that's why everybody should travel with Mix Mix Candy. <laughs> that's right. Right? When you... Yeah, but ten Tennessee's gills are tough. Yeah, well. So, all right, so but tomorrow will work out. You're going to get to lunchtime, and then you're going to get to the guy before, you know, he catches a, a you know, a flight, and, and it'll be another great day, and it'll all work out, right? Because everything oh, works yeah. out. Yeah, and I'll deliver tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, and, and then after that, I don't know what we're doing. I've been watching, but I'm not sure what we're doing. Plus, I'm going to that truck. I'm going to that truck show Friday, and I didn't want to get like stuck in like you know, hey Jay, you're on the road all day. You know what are you doing? And I know hey, like there's a good load in Indianapolis, or a good not a good load, but a good paying car. They called me again today on that Toyota Highlander. Oh, really? 
so I told him, I said, well, I'll let my dispatcher know, and if he can find, you know, some cars going up and three more coming back, I'll take it. He said, well, you want me to go ahead and book it now? I said, no. No. i got to talk to my dispatcher, and if he can find a load going up and two or three more coming back, then I'll take it. But there is a Highlander paying 235 in Indianapolis needs to go to Nashville. Well... I guess, uh, well, if, if you if you, if you get a chance, I mean, I I don't know what I'm thinking, but, you know, if you get a chance, check check it both ways and see if it makes sense to you. And then, um, is that is that, that United Road? Oh, by the way, Dave, that's one of the things we're supposed to talk about. United Road? I hate talking about United Road. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> Oh, man. Why, Dave? What happened? Well, it just takes forever to get your money. I mean, United Road holds your money forever, and then they take a little part of it because some kind of crazy-ass insurance they got that nobody else has. Uh, it just, I don't know. I just don't get all good with United Road. I like, you know what I like? I like their agents, and, um... You know, the track and trace, um, D Jones, she's cool. I like their dispatchers. Well, their VTAS app. Their VTAS app doesn't work right all the time. And if you don't use their VTAS app, they won't pay you. Well, if you're gonna make me use your app, then make your app work. Well and that, you know, I, I, I yeah. get I got all the three cars, well only two of them is in my app. So how do I get paid on the third car? And you know what? That's what I I, I said to him. I said, I don't get it. You got you say we gotta use, we gotta use your load board, but I can't find, I can't find the loads in the load board. They're not in the app. I mean, well, I don't get it, man. Actually, I think they were in the load board, but not the app. I mean, I don't even, and I half the time I can't find them. I don't get it. Well, you seen the email I forwarded you telling me that I wasn't gonna get paid because I didn't use the, I didn't use the app. Well. Yeah. Well, dude, and, and and you know what? That's the thing too is their emails. It's like it's there's too many pages, too much duplicated information. Um, I don't think their BOL. It's not that informative, is it? Like that, no, not really. you know, like that Metro Box BOL. I don't even know what purpose that has. Yeah, I had used. I had moved to Metro Load in a while. I, man. I, but so, and that was the thing. So we wanted to talk about, okay, we talked about United Road. We'll, we'll kind of get through that. But I mean, I think that's pretty much, the thing is, again, it's, as a dispatcher, I'm booking loads on United Road. But I really, to find United Road loads, I'm on, I'm on Central. And I talked to them and I said, listen, I, I, I'm on Central Dispatch looking for your loads. And they're like, well, you know, they're on our load board. And I'm like, well, I, half the time I can't find them. And and even if I do find them, I can either can't I can't book it right away or I can't make a call or brother it just it sends me back to Central Dispatch, which frustrates me. Yeah, if we were going to talk about booking loads, you know, like two days ahead of time, so we can make a plan. But you can't book two days ahead of time, and then they want a twenty-four hour notice. Well, you can't call twenty-four hours ahead if you can't get the load. You know, forty-eight hours ahead. It's, it's true. I'm going to do this because this is where, you know, I used to really like how Ready Auto, I could book like a week in advance, which is what it takes to move a repo load. You literally need a week advance notice to move a load, a repo load. Because if you book it today for pickup tomorrow, the repo lot won't let you have it. And I don't. Well, you have to call tomorrow, and then you get to pick it up the next day if you're lucky. And and so I'm I'm gonna show, I'm just doing it now. I'm doing Tennessee to Indiana, Tennessee, Kentucky. All right, and we're gonna do a search on Ready Auto. Here we go. And I know I know some of these are repo loads. Jackson and Mount Juliet. Okay, let's check the market ID, and then we know. Okay, driver must call. No dry runs. All right, it says in, oh, pick up at a repo agency. There we go. It says pick it up at a repo agency. And we know that a repo agency needs at least 24 hour pretty please. Okay, so I click on the thing to book the load. I've read, okay, and it won't let me book past pickup tomorrow. 
Okay, well that's... What is that? I don't know. I can't book it. I can't get it. Why? Dang it, Dave. I'm so frustrated about it. Yeah. And that's... uh, That's... Yeah. Stephanie and let her know about it. Stephanie... (laughs) You know... uh, Okay, I don't know what you're talking about, but I will say this is that when I do call folks to try to get help, if we've screwed up at all in the past month, they don't want to help us. Which brings us to one of the other problems we wanted to talk about. Is that... That brings us back to United Road Compliance. Is that they're like nuns on your knuckles over there. Yeah. Yeah, if you've got to cancel a vote, they downgrade your status. Oh, and that brings me back to Cars Arrive. So I'm talking to Cars Arrive, and I'm booking a load. And remember, she calls me and says, okay, you're, pick, you're doing Indianapolis to Tennessee. Do you have room for another one? And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that run. Oh, yeah, right, that's right. I'm doing it, but I'm already looking to the future. We're not doing it again. But I said, if you've got one you really need to move, just move one off of us and book and put the urgent one on us. And by the way, why is there a good 30% rate discrepancy? Oh, well, that's you got the, you got the going rate. This is a rush rate. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. If you've got room for rush rate, well, how much are you normally keeping? How much are you keeping even with the rush rate? I mean, come well, on. What's the difference from 160 to 235? <laughs> what difference is that? Well, it's, uh, well, it'd be 60, 90, so it's a $65 difference. <laughs> and so, right. and so well, I think you're right. And so that brings us back to my giant load, lead load data flow chart. All these cooks in the kitchen, and everybody's got to eat the biggest pie they can. It doesn't leave much for Dave. Yeah. And meanwhile, you're the one at the auto auction for two hours, standing in line at the gas pump for 30 minutes, and that's just the easy stuff. <laughs> what if you blow a tire? What if the DOT, you know, turns into a maniac? What if... Yeah. Right? That would suck. That's going to be an hour and a half if he does that. They pull you in that little house, it's going to take a minute. Because they get underneath and check everything. Uh, by the way, April says Cars Arrive pays good. I agree. April, Cars Arrive does pay good. Usually. that's And that's why. But I tell you what. You know what they've started to do? They got the same repo problem that Ready Auto's got. Uh, hang, uh, hang on one second. Hey, Vinny, hold for me, okay? All right. All right, cool. So, um, he could be there a bit, but that's okay. I'm a dispatcher. I'm allowed to do these things. Oh, yeah. Um, well, if you don't start singing, we'll be all right. Right? Hey, man, there ain't no singing. You're thinking of half ass Full Blast. They got Snapchat karaoke. It's on Facebook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, on Cars Arrive, see, Cars Arrive, whereas Ready Auto did the whole, okay, you can't book it past tomorrow stupid stuff, which is just so stupid. Oh, my gosh. But, um... Uh, now Cars Arrive does it. Cars Arrive used to book build a book a week in advance. Now it's not all their loads. Please, Cars Arrive, don't do the ready auto. You can't have it past tomorrow stuff. Please don't do that. Oh my gosh, I, I'm thinking. I think Ready Auto started doing that after they got bought by Cox. What do you think about that? I think you're right. I think I am right. Boom. All right, so anyways, um, where are we at here? Um, oh, yeah, I was showing how it was, yeah. Let, let's look at that again. I want to book it. Okay, it's Tuesday night. Let's pick it up. Hey, Dave, let's pick it up Thursday. Oh, no, right. you, we can't. We can't. I'm going to book it for pickup. So I'm so I'm going to book it for pickup tomorrow, deliver Thursday, and we're just going to lie the whole time. Okay? Uh, there you go. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, don't, don't book that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just skip it. It's a repo lottery. Oh, man, it's a repo, man. Oh, my gosh. It's so crazy. Oh, my gosh. 
It's nuts. Just plain nuts, I tell you. All right, and then what's the last? Oh, yeah, so because I talked to the cars ride, I said, why don't you take one off us and give us a different one? She said, oh, no. You don't want to be bad, bad, bad. I said, oh, my gosh, what? Whoa, that's bad, bad, bad. <laughs> really? It's bad. Oh, my gosh, that's bad. <laughs> okay, man. All right, whatever. All right, you're right. I don't want to be bad, bad, bad. Felt like I was in some kind of David Lynch movie. Um, and what's our, what's the last thing? Oh, this is what I want to say is that you got all these, you got all these, you got all the major load boards. You know, I do. I made the video top five car line load boards. Watch it now. We got top five car line load boards. We got Central Dispatch, One Dispatch, Cars Arrive, Metro Loads, and United Road. And I've just given you reasons why over half of them make your life more difficult so what's going on dude i don't know maybe the government's trying to take over car haulers Ooh, i like that but you know what it's actually private enterprise is going to take over car hauling uh, b because because it's been so wrong for so long <laughs> you that got, could be a song that could be man that. somebody call toby keith let's do this thing Oh, no, you do it. Oh, okay. It's been so wrong for so long. <laughs> okay, so because of that. <laughs> because of <laughs> Because of that. Oh, my gosh. You got the song, dude. And then I got the chorus. Because of that, these geniuses at Amazon and Google and Uber are going to come in and eat everybody's lunch, dude. Yeah, and then it'll be lunchtime again. That's right. All right. <laughs> Start selling cocaine. Uh, <laughs> you're thinking of that Johnny Depp movie. You've seen too many movies. Yeah. Yeah, man. So. I'll be, I'll be Mr. White. Oh, dude, man, yeah. one of the best TV series. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. It's Mix Mix is my name. My name is Mix Mix. All right, well, listen, Dave, we are out of time, but we have, this has been amazing. We're crushing it again, always crushing it. And then next week, we'll do some Facebook Live. What do you think about that? Sounds good, man. All right, cool, man. I will talk with you. Out, I'm sure I'll talk with you tomorrow, dude. See you later, bye. All right, see you, buddy. All right. Oh, and I lost, I lost Vinny. But I did, well, I called him back. Here's the good news. My phone is working. So that's good. Oh, Trump brags at the UN and, and everybody laughs. Well, well, more fake news for you. Hey, everybody's on the fake news. Okay, so where are we at here? Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so now what are we doing? Uh, I'll tell you what. Vinny, you're after John. Let's call John. I told John it would be... Uh, I knew we'd get back on track. <laughs> we got Amanda. We got a... We got a lively live chat tonight. Lively. Man, it's great. I love it. It's better you guys say it than me. I got to try and book these cars. Sheesh, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm the one on the phone that catches grief. Hello. Hey, what's up? Oh, man. Not much. I don't think I can talk to you tonight. Give me five minutes. Five minutes? No, you know why? No. Because... Being a truck driver, I think I should probably have to do this on a on a payphone. Oh, you, you know how? You got me, man. You got me. I, I figured I figured I did. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You totally had me. But that, that is nothing new about that. You always, you know, pull a fast one on me. I'm telling you. Somehow. I'm telling you. Somehow you. Tr you always trick me. I, I guess I'm gullible. I, You'd think as a dispatcher, I, I, would, I wouldn't be so gullible anymore. Well, you know, I remember my parents. My dad had a trucking company with his brother, and then he went on to be a company man, and my uncle did. Um, he went on to do his own thing. He was an owner-operator, and uh, they used to have to work off of, you know, worked off the payphone. You know, you had to call in, and, you know, you get so far, you had to call in to find out what was going on, and, you know, they were living stop to stop at that time but it's amazing that today with all this technology we have 
there's still that mentality that we got we got to work like we did the industry did in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Well, you got to dumb it down and you got to get the fax machine going. Oh, crank it up. That's what I'm talking about. So, I mean, it's just, it's but so stereotypical. You know, in the, in the new, the new people that are coming in today to the industry, you know, are, they're, oh, they're forced. They have to, they have to embrace the, com- the communication technology. I don't, I don't see um, anybody that's, that's uh, 40 or, or under that's not going to embrace the technology. And they're forcing these guys that have, you know, didn't want to have to touch a computer to have to deal with some of this electronic stuff, especially with logging. So I just, I, I just hate fax machines. Why well, do we need them? Well, well, I don't get it. I, now, I, don't I, get it. I don't know why. I honestly, I don't even have... I don't even have an e-fax account anymore. I have no fax machine act. Oh, I do have fax machine access. That's true. I can send a fax, but I can't even think of the last time I did. It was probably well, it was probably to Central Dispatch for a carrier packet. Yeah. Did Did you Did you see the email that I sent to them? The comment I sent to them. No. I oh. Sent it to you. Oh yeah. You know what? I was prepping for the show. I'm going to open it now. Let's see what we got here. You said, uh, let's see here. I said? I said, oh, here we go. Oh, you submitted a question. (laughs) I did. Okay, so I know this, here we go. This is great. I know this is the trucking industry, but believe it or not, most of us have smartphones. I got to copy this. This is too funny. Can I copy this? Whatever you want. Um, uh, no, I okay. You, I can't. For your amusement, just let you All know. right, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because I can't fully copy it. All right. I know this is the trucking industry, but believe it or not, most of us have smartphones and internet capabilities. Since we do everything on the web concerning booking and posting loads, electronic fa- transfers to central D bills and more, one would think we could upload the packet. I can't imagine that on your end it's cost effective to waste ink and toner to have a poor quality document only to be electronically transferred, wasting man hours to post it on your website. It's also not cost effective to pull over a rig, find a parking spot, and then walk a half mile to where the fax machine is so I can incur yet another charge. Let's make this easy for everyone and save us all a little money by allowing us to either email or upload future paperwork. Well said, John, man, right? <laughs> that is I can't handle I just can't handle stupid stuff like that, man. That just drives me crazy. You know, I mean, for the first time I had to do a refinance on a mortgage, right? Uh, everything was uploaded. You took a picture of a document, you uploaded it. You sent a bank statement, you uploaded it. Uh, in in one of my other endeavors, I had um, somebody call me and they needed the employee paperwork and my license and all this. Dude, I, I just sat there and plugged away on the computer for 20 minutes, gave them the information they needed, uploaded my license, did all that stuff. They're happy campers. Super dispatch, you know, it's kind of like <clears throat> there's... <laughs> In the realm of sales, we call it a stall. That's where, you know, everything's going real good, and then all of a sudden, the client or whoever's sitting across the table from you throws you a bone that's just going to stop you in your tracks and make you think and work a little bit. And, and, and this is so true. I mean, it's so, so true. We have to stop, and now we have to go back to vintage technology. Why don't I send this to you in a view master? Um, in a view master. That way, it's, it's, it's well, going to be 3D. It could be 3D fax ready, you know, put the little thing in there, click it, oh, there's page one, great, it's 3D, wonderful. Well, it's, uh, so, it's so funny that, I mean, people have been cashing checks in the bathroom for like a decade now. How, how old is that? Where they first talk, take a picture of your check, and then, you know, jump in the pool, get a drink, and you're, and you're banking. That's old, yeah. man. That's a... Yeah. Okay, I, did, I don't so, even... Millennials don't even know what what was before that. No, but you know what I mean? Because I lived with drivers 
and my family made money that way. You know, I remember these stories. So when I see stuff like this come up, it automatically triggers back to my dad when he was like 40 years younger and he had me and he's like, no, no, I had to do this. And that. Oh my gosh, what a pain in the butt. I'm thinking about it now going, you know, gee, I mean, I'm homeless. So not a really a big deal. I have to, I have to send my paperwork to my friend who's a printer who has a fax machine <laughs> and he faxes it out to me, you know, and then he so... sends me the, the confirmation that I could have in a split second by them saying successfully uploaded. What a... You know, we can't do that. And, and I called Chicago, and I am just questioning this lady all up and down. I'm like, come on, you know, you want you want electronic payments. You want all this stuff electronic, but the paperwork you think you have to have to make your world work. I've got to send you a crummy copy you're not going to be able to read. Which is why, yeah, the copy, the the copy of your M, the the latest copy of your MC Authority looks like you yeah. looks like you drove over it, backed up, and then did yeah. donuts and then sent it in. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, I just you know, I just, Crazy. I just want to. I mean, seriously, I just want to dump a coffee across. Oh you know, man. Smudge it a little bit. Like I'm like telling a, you. Like a like a scratch at a forty-five. You know in a rap song, and I want to send it through the fax machine, and I want to dump donut crumbs Dude, in the fax machine. Dude, we, we, we got to have the, we got to have the Charlie Chaplin dumb it down filter, where it looks like the, oh, uh, the 20s. I mean, I mean, seriously though, think oh about this. Oh my God. I mean, back when the copy machine came out, how many times did people photocopy their rear end? Right? How many times I did mean, it end up on your MC authority? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think there's somebody ought to hop up on a copier and, and send that somewhere to build a packing. Oh, my God, I don't know how that got there. I'm so embarrassed. Page. I've been in my fax machine from 1975. Uh, help me out here. I don't care. The, the, the MC Authority has tire tracks, the insurance has a coffee stain, and the W9 has a rear end on it. Exactly. If you don't have those things in the proper order with those extra That's items, right. If you don't have it, we can we just can't you're accept not, you're it. You're not a trucker. Yeah, we just can't. You're not a, just not a truck driver. Yeah, no, we're, we're not. Real. We're just not going to be able to accept it. Oh my gosh. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking like, you know what? I'm probably going to have to get my big belt buckle out and spill coffee down the front of me before I can even call Super Dispatch <laughs> or uh, Central Dispatch. <laughs> <laughs> be like, hey, hey, you got your coffee stain shirt on? Yes, yes, ma'am, I do. How much belt buckle? Yeah. <laughs> About the size of a dinner plate. Okay, great. We can talk to you now. That's that's part of the uniform. Yeah. Like you have to have. <laughs> you have to have stains oh on your shirts. But, oh my but, god. Know, this you know, is you too funny. About, when, when people talk about like racial profiling, or they 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 talk about the the quirks in different ethnic groups, that is what they're doing to the truckers in this industry. Oh. Uh, no kidding. If truckers, if truckers are trying to get ahead technologically, Central Dispatch is is stopping them. No sir. Oh. You are gonna oh, use that fax machine and like it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And, and I said this lady. I said, you realize, you know, I don't have a fax machine in my truck. And then she gave me the proper steps as to where I could pull over and get it back. Well, there's an Office Max. What we've done is we've just looked at our. No, 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 no. No, 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 no! You cannot fax from an office. No, we got you. That is, that so is, that is too cutting edge. So it's we've got to be from the fuel desk. We've just looked in our Thomas Guide maps, and we found an Office Max where you can go and buy a fax machine. And since there's not many left, they're like eighty bucks. But that's what it's going to take to be in our system. Yeah, but the thing is, is I'm going to need a USB port that I can I'll just say, into my phone. Now, now you got to go find an analog phone line. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know. Oh, my God. This is real. This is real. It's, you know what the scary part is? It's 2018. In, yeah, yeah, but get this. Somewhere in the middle of all that is the pager, and they haven't included it in the whole realm of old material that you need to have somewhere they got to work a pager in oh yeah no we you're right we need a beeper in here this is awesome yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, and, with, with a little code you know that you can use after after, after you fax it in 
we'll send you a message on your beeper when you're ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you what. It's so stupid. Oh, my gosh. This I, is so much I fun. I can't believe. This is the best part of dispatching. <laughs> is the after hours <laughs> nonsense. It's crazy. Well, you know, I just can't believe the people would just walk away from technology in a major step. I know. I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would you walk away from technology right at the, at the cusp of what you want to do? I said, do you realize that I could have all this to you in seconds and you'd be able to read it and it would be HD quality, wonderful stuff, and you want me to, I don't know, it'd be like sending, it'd be like sending a movie in uh, on beta. You know, what is the oldest tape we have available <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna yeah. have we're gonna have a company picnic and we're gonna watch it on beta. That's hilarious. Yeah, tr 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 truckers, truckers, truckers have uh, probably still have beta machines and the oversized first big screen TVs that were like the size of house to house. Yeah, still have that and the easy chair of some sort. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I just. You know what's oh great? Gosh. People are having a great time reminiscing about fax machines and beepers. So you know what? You just brought some joy to people's lives. Oh, and, and you know we, what? These things are supposed to be in the past, but not at Central Dispatch. This is current. This yeah, is you know this is modern technology. I got I got to tell you this. As I told you, I was going for a refinance. Could you believe? Oh shoot. The last document they needed, they wanted it faxed. No. The very last document out of fifty some things they wanted, they wanted that last document faxed, and I said. Are you for real? This is a joke, right? And they're like, okay, you can send it in. You can email it. I'm like, yeah, we are not faxing squat. Come on, man. I mean, seriously? They give you... What, what, I, got, they give, I got an idea. Let's get out the tablets like Moses did. I'm just let's saying, just hammer it out. I was just going to say, so, what they, they, give you the, they give you the powder and the brush, and you got to go like, it's archaeology. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I'll be on it. You know what? I would be on it on an archaeological oh dig gosh. in my basement looking for a fax machine. Oh man! Very important thing out to you. You know, oh, that's so so. You know what it is? I think it's kind of like a real sick trucker scavenger hunt. Okay, let's see here. They gotta find this form in their truck. This this this. <laughs> a fax machine. Yeah, man, it'd be great. A fax machine would be awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Well, they got a crank up version. Let's You've got to have something really old, you know. I don't get it. You, you know, I know. Well, and I think we beat this horse to death. So, I mean, it was my, oh my pleasure gosh. to do so. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. It's craziness. And the reason yeah, we're talking, you know it's what? it's but, not it's not any fun, but it needs to get fixed. Yeah, and you know what? And, and, and you know that you and I, and I've, I've been like in the forerunner there to tell people stuff it. You're going to get it by email or nothing. Um, you know, oh yeah, you have. I just think, I just think sticking to these old technologies. But I think too, again, it, it's kind of like it's profiling. They're profiling the trucker as not being intelligent. You know, dude, I told you. Allegedly. The time I went to one of those leading uh, truck stops, and the kid behind the counters treat me like dirt because I was dirty that day. I was getting a shower, and so I acted like I was mm. dumb as a stump. And uh, I finally walked out and I said, dude, I'm just messing with you. But you got to realize, people on this side of the counter are starting at thirty to $40,000 a year. Your side of the counter is not anywhere near that, you know. And I said, you got to realize, there's people on this side of the counter that have had college degrees. They know the pulse of the world or the, or the nation. They're listening to their news all day. They're going to these different places. They're seeing it for themselves. And I said, and you think this side of the counter is crazy. And we're stupid. <laughs> we're hardworking guys, feeding our family, doing what we do, moving America. And you're judging me because I walk in here dirty after a long day. You can't do that. You know, and it's that stigma. It's a yeah. total, total stigma. It, you know what it's, I mean? It's, just, it's true. And I, I get the same thing on the, when I make these calls. Uh, I, 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 I know a lot of times I'm talking to people and I can tell they're thinking, you don't know what you're talking about. You just don't know what you're talking about. And I'm thinking, I, no, well, I really do. I think, really I do. think though, too, that um, people don't give credit to who's on the other side of that as to 
what other knowledge and background they're bringing you know what from somewhere else and you know you're judging me on what i'm doing right here right now and this does not define who i am or what i do well and then and there's enough of this judgment to 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 go around in many sectors of life so uh unfortunately or or fortunately we don't own that so but we do we do own the we do truly own the the uh uh title of one of the final industries to treat the fax machine like current technology exactly yeah i believe we do own that and they also own the dashboard cassette player with either Buck Owens or Merle Haggard. <laughs> yeah, dude. Eight tracks of Merle Haggard. <laughs> Eight tracks. Exactly. Exactly, right. dude. Got, or Chris Christopherson for that much, you know, so whatever. That's right. So, That's right. Well, my friend, you have a fantastic night. You too, man. Thank you so much for coming on. I, that was awesome. Absolutely. I love doing that. Thank you for the show. Oh, thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Anytime. Thank All you. Right. Take care. Okay, man. Bye. See you. Peace. All right. Now we're going to go to. We got one more call. We're right on time. Actually, we're, we're right on time. Wow. So, yeah, this is Vinny, 945. And then we're going to go to Stan at 10. Awesome. We're right on time. I can't believe it. Hey. Hey, what's up, Vinny? What's up? All right, let's hear your story. What's going on, man? What do you want to tell me? Uh, Monway. Okay. That wonderful, that wonderful company. Okay. We got oh. a, we got a lot of wonderful companies tonight, but yeah, tell me what happened there. <laughs> so I saw this. Uh, I was going to take a ride up to Buffalo, and uh, so I'm looking for cars to come back to Long Island. And I see the car, and it says Monway on it. I'm like, yeah, they had it up for 500 which is pretty good, but I don't want to move any cars for them. Saturday, actually Sunday, I saw it for 600 I'm like, okay, Monday, I'll swallow my, my cry, and I'll make a phone call, and I'll get the car moved. Yeah. Monday, Monday morning, I see it for 650 I'm like, oh, even better. I call up, is this car still available? Yes, when can you pick it up? I can pick it up on Tuesday, Wednesday, delivered Thursday. Okay, we're gonna call you back, we gotta call the customer. Okay, fine. So I'm saying to myself, there's a little BS. Yeah, it just doesn't feel, you, you, I know exactly what you mean, you're like, nah, I don't, I'm not believing it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. he I calls know. me back, I have, to, I have the customer on the other line, um, so you gotta pick it up on, uh, on Tuesday, it's like most likely Wednesday morning. He said, okay, fine. Um, it's open from 7.30 to 3. You need a release. You need this. You need that. And then you have to call ahead on the drop-off. I'm like, that's fine. Before I can even say, how am I getting paid? He's like, well, can you do it for 500 I'm like, what do you mean? You have it listed for 650 He's like, yeah, the customer has a more money. And... We overpriced it. I'm like, well, why are you listed for 650 if the customer only wants to pay 500 They think, like, well, that's all they got. Okay, why did you list it for 650 instead of 500 Oh, we thought we had more money. Okay, I know I, know I speak English. Why did you list it for 650 <laughs> so, That's hilarious. It's like, listen, it's 500 I was like, no. It's not 500. I don't. I don't want it no more. Fine. This morning I get a phone call by Monway, <laughs> same guy. Um, do you have room in your truck? I'm like, the what? Oh, we have to have the escape still for 550. I'm like, no, I'm ready to fill up the spot. Oh, but would you take it for 550? I'm like. Uh, if I had no, if I still had an extra space, uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, it was still listed until 4 o'clock, and then that was it. So I don't know if somebody took it, or they lost the job. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
That's the problem. Yeah. Somebody probably took it. That's the problem. Well, it, it, it was paying good. At six fifty, it was paying like a dollar sixty six a mile. Okay. For Long Island. But st- hey, That's man, great. it's long. It's long, but it's Long Island. I mean. No, oh, I lived at Jake, so you know I'm no, going back home. I know. I don't know any dude. I don't know anybody that drives there. I don't know anybody that drives there. It should pay good. But, it's uh, Long Island. Yes, but uh, you know, and it always goes back to that Facebook, Facebook, Facebook post. Oh, I know. With just a stereo drive, like well, a stereo. Ah. Uh, Stand late now. It's okay. Steering wheel holder. That's Steer- all we are. Right. We're just, we're just holding a steering wheel. We're just idiots that drive on the road. It's, you know, $10 an hour type of people. We're not. And. Amen. And I believe that they had more money than 650 or 750 They may have $1,000 and they try to make more money. Yeah. They probably did have a 1000 I. I I totally wouldn't put it past that they had a thousand dollars, and it's almost like it feels. That's why when when he says I got to call the customer, it feels like he's just got to go in the back room. And it's his turn at beer pong. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and then the other thing is, it's like, oh, I got I got a fish on the hook. Uh yes. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh. Oh, we have it 500. Most cases, like, oh, you need this load to fill up your truck. Uh, no, I'm right two days ahead. I'm taking two days ahead. I'll get another car, which I did. You know, it was a little bit less money, but the mileage is less, so whatever. You know, but... but it's it's. I lo- hate that company. Well, I really, you, I really do hate that company. And you know what? You are not alone. So so many people hate them. But I always say, if they pay good, and the price is really good, and I get it, you know, I still am running the business. I'm still trying to make money, so I will take it. But if it's like average or Below average, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't care. It's if there weren't so many new people all the time, they would probably run into a problem. But just like you know, there's still people that are gonna try to book a mix mix, and no, you know, they don't know. They 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 no. see they see the mix mix, and they're gonna call the mix mix, and they're gonna try and book a mix mix. But after a while, after a few mix mixes, you're like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna book four Caterpillar tractors. Well, hey, speaking of that company, I signed up with them two years ago, and I haven't moved one load for them. Yeah. Oh, they, they have, and they move even less. Oh yeah, I, I don't know who. And they sold. Yeah. Well, it, it, let me tell you, I would sell too because if I was coming up with stupid stuff. And it wasn't working. I'd sell too. Yeah, no. Hopefully, oh, no. Ho- hopefully the no. new somebody. No, somebody bought them, and I forgot. I, I, I want to say somebody say it was like uh, Cox Automotive or something like that. Not nah. like logistics. Well, you're not talking about a Certus, are you? No, no. I'm talking about Metro. So somebody, somebody be. So they changed their name to a Certus, and then a Certus sold to somebody else. Is that what you're saying? I guess, but the price is like half the what it used to be. I didn't know that. Well, I don't. I honestly don't know. I have no idea. But I know that. I mean, they changed their name to a Certus, but they're still listing a mix mix. So, just because you well, changed your name, if you were going to play the same games, then you're the same company. I mean, what's the point? Yeah. I well, mean, there's, there's there's a lot of things that I uh, name it I mix was, mix. You know, hearing hearing about the show like. One dispatch, right? You were talking about one dispatch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, two days. Okay. The other load I got is from uh, from one dispatch. Yeah. So it says I have to pick it up by today. Okay. Yeah, I can pick it up today. I, I made an offer. They took the offer because it's been sitting up there for two weeks. I'm gonna pick it up whenever I want. Dude, they sit there forever because their their system is yes. stupid. It doesn't make sense. Okay. I'll get a phone call. It's like uh. 
what's up with this load? I'm like, oh, I'm going to pick it up tomorrow morning. Oh, what's the way? I'm like, uh, the rain, the weather. I don't know. There's an accident. ELD. Oh, okay. So you're going to pick it up. I'm like, yeah. They don't care. Lump the car gets shit. No, and they're... And you know how there's ratings on there? They, I, I don't even know if they're still there. Their whole rating system is pointless. Oh, yeah. My, my rating is like negative 13. <laughs> <Right. matter. laughs> What's their rating? Sir? I, I used to care. Dude, I, I, whatever. We should run a... Who, who's got the lowest ready auto rating? Tell us. Tell, we want to know your We want to know your one dispatch negative rating. I th I'm being serious. I think mine is like negative 18. Yeah, I've because seen... I was because I was canceling things left and right because I found something else that you can uh, pay better. You know, well, they're not going to sign up with me. Listen, that's... I'm sign up with them every year. And that's part of the joke here, is that uh, when carriers are forced to take low-paying stuff and it's assumed they're not going to dump that for something that pays twice are you kidding oh. don't you guys i mean you you do like to eat right Vinny? yes yes and you like to pay your bills do you and do you like living indoors okay well you're probably gonna have to cancel that in-op garbage well i have to pay the insurance to have everybody to yeah because just because you got a hundred percent rating and no insurance that's not going to do anybody any good no I, I don't know why it, it seems so hard to understand. Yeah, no, but uh, United Road, I, I really, I really don't understand that five percent on the ACH. Why oh. do you guys take so much money? Oh, oh, let me and don't get me started on what Mix Mix charges just to get a com check. Oh my God, they may as well they may as well open their own bank. You know, Mix uh, Mix Bank. The cars are right. I, I tell you, I, I love Cars Ride. You should book a week out, and then... I do love Cars Ride. I so hope they don't change that. Oh, God, no. Cars Ride, please no. don't do this. No, because you know what? You can make a trip out of everything. Well, yeah. I No, I do. I book Cars Ride all the time. And when it when I'm, as a dispatcher, when the carrier doesn't have Cars Ride, I hate that because it's all I see. Yes. Yes. So I'm just, I'm praying that cars arrive. And I think we're okay because Cars Arrive is owned by KAR and KAR has nothing to do with Cox or Mix Mix. Please, oh, please, like yeah, please, Cars Arrive, just stay cool. Oh, well, God, we need they to. Have, they have whatever it is, a death, a trade rev, and all that other nonsense. Now they, can, now they hooked up with IAA, which I, I showed you that, uh, yeah. uh, the picture, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But but you know, wonderful. But you know what's funny? When I first started dispatching, okay, back in 2012, I remember in 2013, 2014, when when cars arrived, when the old guard found out that the carriers I was working with were using dispatchers, they threatened to shut them off. True oh, they true, be, true story. And now I don't I guess they don't do that anymore. I don't know. That that that's true. In 2013, I had a carrier tell them that he's not firing his dispatcher because they say he can't have one. But that happened. Was it a, dis well, was it a dispatcher, or they thought you were rebrokering? Well, uh, people, the you know, people think that all the time. And I have to say, listen, yeah. I pointed out, I'm like, listen, a broker works with shippers and and lives in a nice house. A dispatcher hunts for load, sifts through garbage, and barely eats tuna. <laughs> I'm not a broker. I'm a dispatcher. I like tuna, thank God. But uh, on the beginning of the show, you would talk. You would, you know, the the first thing you were doing, like the person is like, "I want to ship my car, right? Where does that go?" When I started, oh. I was trying to uh, buy leads. Yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll spend whatever it was. I, I think one guy was like, oh, you get like 250 leads and it's like uh, $150 or I forget what it was. Maybe 250 for 150 leads. Right. So I'm like, okay, I was getting all these emails. Then I was calling the customer. He's like, oh, you're like a 10th guy. I'm like, 10th right. guy. Right. People are getting this. Right. And then, I was getting all, and then I was getting all bikes. I'm like, I don't do bikes. Why am I getting bikes? 
Right. I don't want to do more cycles. So that was like $250 dollars up. I'm like, so that guy is making money by getting somebody to put a car off, and then he sells it to brokers. They try to get the money. They make more money. <laughs> and then try to sell it to us for... So that's what's funny, is that... Um, it would almost be like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't need any of the analogy, but I, I know this is that it starts with the lead generators. Really what's happened is in my, in my quest for what is going on around here, I'm finding out that all roads lead back to the lead generators, which is really, I, I gotta tell you, that's where some of this show is going is we're going to, we're going to. It's almost like, you know, Woodward and Bernstein. We're on a path to find out what is up with the lead generators. And I, I don't know. They're, 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 I think they're making more... And look, they're making more money than play. anybody. Oh, exactly. They don't even, play anything. even the broker... Exact, and even the brokers are thinking, I wish I was a lead generator. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. Oh, yeah, and... Do you know? Do you know anything about? Well, you you so you bought leads. You probably know a few lead generators, don't you? Yeah. Well, I, I did this uh, back in 20, 2012, 2013. and then I get and I still get uh, emails. I'm like, hell out of I'm gonna spend my money again like that. Screw that. Yeah. I bet well, you got time to drive and and, and you know. And that's the thing is. You regular customers. Well, here's the thing is, I also know as a driver. I mean, to develop a business where you can handle all the leads and all that stuff, I mean, now you're really getting quite complicated. Yeah. So there is a time, there's a place for different businesses. I, 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 you know, you and I both know we're, we're realistic. However, we also know that if the guy that gets the info first is the one making all the money, then it's time to it's time to start you know hanging out at, at yeah. we got to get to that party man that's where they got the good stuff. Yeah, I know. So well, I don't know. We're, we'll we'll get story. there. I'll, I'll tell you one more story. Uh, I had to move a car. It was a private uh, residence to I guess the college. Uh, she wanted to drop off a kid's car to Cleveland, Ohio. But okay, fine. Blah, 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 so the price, okay, great. i never done this before. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm, I'll am i be doing it. I'll pick it up. You deal straight with me. No brokers, no anything. Okay, fine. Man, what a pain in the... Well, because yeah. you got to do all the education and the hand-holding. And so, what, what's so funny I is... Think, go ahead. She was like this, like, oh, but she had school... Monday, uh, I think Tuesday would be the best day. I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up Monday, and I'll be there, I don't know, between 12 and 2 on Tuesday, if everything goes good, because I don't know what the road gives me. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, if there's an accident, there's a, I have a flat tire, you know, I don't know what the road, you know, the road gives you. I said, oh, okay. But she has school. I'm like, okay. So she has a friend. I'm like, this is my, not my first college I go to. Usually, there's only one person there that they all know. I drop off four cars. Here's the keys. You guys handle it. And that's fine. I have a broker that does that. But, um, of course, today, rain is no deep. And, 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 and that's what, well, let me say this. And that's where we know brokers serve a function because somebody's got to educate them and do all the hand holding. Yes. They want the cheapest rates, but they worry all day. No, no, she didn't care about the rate. Oh, okay. So, so she was like worried about getting the car there without in between her classes. I'm like, okay, so I. That is hard. I'm sitting on eighty. I'm sitting on eighty for like an hour because. Because of the rain. Uh, I, I tracked the trailer. Was trying to go over the median on the other side. You're right. Onto westbound side, do like a tumble, like a. It landed on the roof. I'm like, wow. Dude. So I took a picture. I sent it to her. She's like, oh, my God. This is nerve-wracking. Oh, my God. I've never done this. this <laughs> the boy. I'm like, lady, I'm calm. You're like hysterical. <laughs> it's like, why are you so calm? I'm like, it is what it is. 
exactly. get there when I get there. Oh, you know, that's. I think that's what we're up against. When when you say to somebody it is what it is and they don't know what reality is, yeah, they they like literally have a brain split. Yeah, because I was, I was like this. I'm like I used to get upset. Now I, it is what it is. I'm like there's a reason why this guy wanted to do an accident because maybe I would have got an accident down the road. Oh, I never thought of that. Oh, okay. I get there. I get there three thirty. Now I'm an hour and a half behind. I get there three thirty, drop the car. My ELD didn't even click off of driving. That's how fast I unloaded the car and I kept going. Basically like unstrapped it, kept going, the car full up the uh, the trailer. I already got paid when I picked up the car. Here's the keys, have a nice day. Five minutes. It's like, oh, thank you, you're the best, blah blah blah. And she gave me a review on Facebook. I'm like, awesome. Well, that's what's funny. Right. After all that, after all that tension and build up, yeah. wh when the car gets delivered, it's like party! Thank God! Yeah, like, like, oh, you're great. You're very, uh, <laughs> you, were, you, you know, your communication was great. I'm like, I understand, but so, it's like, oh, am I going too crazy that I keep texting you if you're gonna be there on time? I'm like, but yes. sometimes. I'll, Sometimes the celebration is worth all the pain. Sometimes. Yeah, but she was texting me like every half hour. Oh, man. I'm like, listen, I'll, re I'll text you back if I can't make it there at that time. If the time changes, I'll, re I'll text you back. Like, I'm, dr okay. I'm driving. That's oh, man. So, listen, Vinny, I, uh, I'm up against my 10 o'clock, and i got to talk to Stan. But I'm really, really glad that I got you on the phone to tell your story and to talk about. I mean, what I like what's happening here is as we move into talking to Stan at Carshipio, we have painted a picture that, I mean, there are so many moving parts and yet still so many technological problems. How in the world can, can things ultimately, can we, can we get a better system moving forward? Is it possible? I think so. I mean, because because like the like the the you know the uh, the song and dance with the 500, 550. Do I hear a six hundred, six fifty? Do you, can we go back to five? I mean, that, come on, really? What? Come on, you got to be kidding. Well, it's stupid. Well, that's that's the reason why I want to tell that story with that company because I want people like the other guys well, to watch. And I mean, I want them to understand which companies are good and which companies are not good. Well, but, to watch out. but I pointed out a major load board that won't let me book a repo 48 hours in advance, but the repo needs a pretty please for 36. I mean, what the hell? Right. I mean, I, oh I got about okay. one hour. I got about one hour to leeway. What am I? Do okay. I need? Do I book it? Do I book it first thing in the morning? Call the repo immediately and just beg them to answer the phone? And I mean, come on, man. You know what you gotta do? Stupid. Maybe, maybe you should try calling. Uh... Uh, one dispatch and talk to uh, a manager see if they want to go on the show. And talk about well, it. I'll tell you what. Here's the deal. I, I'm with you. and I. But I, you know what? That goes for one dispatch, United Road. We don't need to talk to cars uh, right, right now. Well, yeah. car, man, you know, I'll talk to cars. I mean, I'll talk to anybody. But uh, I think what is going to have to happen is, because this show is gaining momentum, and somewhere, somewhere, I mean, th this show is going to make it into somebody's office, and they're going to be like, what is going on here? Central Dispatch? you imagine? I don't think they care. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care. They're, you know what? Somebody, Somebody's listening to you right now, and all they're doing is putting more toner in the fax machine. They don't care. <laughs> the fax. I should have an <laughs> a, a electronic fax number. I, I, I guess I should. I, I thought I thought I didn't. I don't have a beeper anymore. I didn't think I needed a fax machine anymore. No, nah, but, it, it, you know, like, cause right. They send everything to email that goes through your fax. Well, but they, that's, but you don't have to, but see, with cars arrive, fax is a backup option. You don't have to have a fax. Well, that's true, too. I mean, so, you know, anyways, well, listen, man. Thanks for joining me on the show tonight. Thanks for watching and staying tuned. I appreciate You're probably one of my oldest viewers as far as the show goes, and I really appreciate that, Vinny. Nah, no problem, man. I appreciate everything you're doing for us, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I really do.
All right, man. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right, peace. All right, so now we're going to get to... Uh, man, we've got a lot of stuff we've covered. And then now that we've pointed out a million problems, let's see if we can start talking some solutions. So bear with me. We're going to go to... We're going to switch to the... Uh, uh, let's see here. Check, check, check. Let's see if I got. Test, test, check, check, check. And I might have, I might have to. Uh, uh, let's see here. For some reason. Let's disable that. Let's enable that. Okay, check the audio. Hey, hey, check, check. Okay, let's do some video. Oh yeah, that's right, I gotta get rid of this. All right, so let's do that. Let's do, let's do that. Hey, how you doing? Check, check, one, two. Oh my gosh, what happened, Jay? It's crazy. All right, let's do that. Let's do, nope, 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 not that. Let's do, yeah, we had it. Let's go back to that. Check, check. One, two. Oh, man, I lost it. Hold on. Okay, check, check. Now, let's do... Let's send them an, an, an invite. Okay. Let's go to... Honey, what's he doing? Oh, I don't know. He's emailing and texting and faxing. I think he's doing one of them broker packets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those take like a couple weeks. Yeah, we already we already ran through half of our kitty. Just getting through the packet. Nobody says the kitty anymore, do they? Does anybody say that? All right, so, hey, Stan, here comes your email. And then you'll be able to uh, join me. And then we can get this road back on the show. Nobody says that either. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see how we're doing. We got the stream. Oh, the stream's still cooking. Yeah, I had the same situation, Vinny. Keep trucking. A lot of them are skeptical. I would have asked for a tip for the headache. Um, and, you know, I've had some, uh, as a dispatcher, I've had some residential moves that were just nuts. They were nuts. Uh, you know, everybody's in a pretzel over nothing. And, um, or, or they, you know, they think it's a big deal. Hey, hey, check, check. Okay, so, all right, yep, so we're checking audio. Can you hear me? Hey. Hey, can you, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. So, remember that audio setting you did? Yeah. Where, I think it was the mic boost? Yeah. Do that again, because I'm hearing that kind of after echo crackle. Oh, now I don't hear it. Oh, now I hear it. Still hear it. Remember that mic boost thing we were talking about? No, it should be off. Okay. Oh, you know what? What? I think it was also... Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, Stan, welcome. Oh, I do, I do hear it. Let's do this. I'm going to use my... I'm going to use my headset, too. See if that helps. Um, hit mic. Bear with us. Mic check. All right, cool. So, let's see here. I can hear me, and I'm doing headphones. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, Stan. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, that's better. It might be. It might have been my speakers, something like that. Okay, so here we are. Oh no, I do hear it. Dang, it's like a, um, it's like a crunchy echo. Is it my, my headphones? It's not your headphones. It's like, uh, and you, you, you did like a setting, like there was a mic boost thing. Let me try to find it again. See if you can find that. Cause I think that cleared it up. Uh, let's go to, while we're doing that. Okay. I got that. Let's do. Okay. 
that. Okay. I don't know what the hell was it. <laughs> stuff is crazy. That technology stuff. Ah, uh, it's crazy. It really is. Well, and that's it's it's actually interesting because nothing is as simple as we wish it was. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the problem. But one of my one of my gripes, what I'm talking about is, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem like um, I don't feel like some stuff's even being worked on. Is it better now? It is better now. Okay. Yeah, it is better now. Okay, cool. Oh, sure. I just heard it again. Well, maybe I heard you. But it might be. Let me turn down my... Turn down these some of these audio levels. And then if you guys... Let me know... If somebody says... Uh, somebody in the live chat if can let us know how the audio is. Because maybe that I hear it. Maybe it's not coming through. I don't know. So anyone's... If someone can, let me know what you're hearing audio-wise. And while we do that, Stan, what did you what did you think of some of that? I know you had a lot of thoughts. What did you think of this, you know, image that I put up here about uh, uh, of the steps? Yeah. Information travels, basically a workflow of information. Uh, so there's a lot a lot to it that is that is true and um and most of it is true or all of it is true maybe there is a more to add uh but you know uh carrier i guess doesn't see a whole picture but that's that's good that you point point out that um there's a lot of information that's being transferred or entered and Perhaps you touched on why it's important to have a correct information so you can save time and money. Are you still playing with your audio settings? Yeah, and it got really loud for a second. We had something the other night when we talked last night. We had we had something that was better, and it because if if what I'm going to do is if this persists, I'm going to bring you on the phone. Okay. Okay. And it, it's 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 almost like it's like a compressor. Let's do this. Let's go to. I'm gonna call you on the phone, okay? All right. We're still staying on this. Hang on one yeah. second. Stay right there. Is it better? Hang on one second. Let me just kill the sound on that, right? Yeah, kill the sound on that. All right, cool. So I've got you on the phone. All right. So what we're going to do... Oh. No, I have a weird echo going on. <laughs> well, you have to turn down your show audio. I did. All right, cool. So we're going to do it this way. All right, so we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to. We're gonna go back to this screen. All right, and I think there's there might be a little echo, but we'll see what happens. So, um, Stan, for for some for people that don't know who you are, what uh, what do you what do you have? What do you do? What do you work on? I'm gonna bring it up on the screen. Uh, so I work on Carshipio, or a transport platform uh, that is designed for uh, car haulers, car carriers, brokers, shippers, uh, a marketplace for people to find loads, uh, for shippers and brokers to ship cars easier. Um, there's a lot of technology. It's uh, really an ecosystem and a platform for the transportation industry. And... In doing that, what part of the ecosystem you're are you involved? I mean, from the beginning of the ecosystem, like when we look at when we look at it, are you involved in the lead generating part? 
I think the answer is yes. Is I mean, you get, but you'll you'll get shippers with leads. With so today, yeah. today uh, we actually involved in uh, I would say, skimming through this through in all of the steps honestly already. That's we what started I started in 2014. We launched the product for carriers in May of 2014. It was public, uh, and uh, it was specifically for carriers. But we had already at that moment a lot of stuff built that allow us to go further than, further than that. So today uh, we do interact, but we're not a lead provider. We don't sell leads per se, right? Um, which, which we can do, and we're actually you know, looking into probably doing it, but we're not going to be a typical lead provider. We probably may be providing a small number of quality leads to brokers that use our platform, but that's not what we're about at all. That's like point 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 zero zero one percent of what we do. Hey, check. So, but we do have. Go ahead. Check this out. A April says the ladies at Royalty Logistics love Carshipio. Yeah, they're a good customer broker on the broker side. Cool. April. That's pretty cool. April, tell us more about that, cause uh, I am not. Uh, I I don't know Royalty Logistics. Um, but you, you do, Stan. You know you know that customer. Yeah, very good. We have very good relationship. They, uh, they pleasure to work with. Um, they have uh, embraced the technology. They came over from a team broker at a previous company, and um, like they hit, um, I guess, 120 miles an hour right away. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so in this scenario, um, they are a broker using Carshipio as a CRM to post loads. Is that what they're doing? So not not necessarily just to post loads. That's again for the broker. As of today, it's a small portion of what they do is they still utilize central dispatch to find carriers, but they process uh, orders from the customers. Uh, they process uh, they send them quotes. They invoice customers. They present customers with the status updates. Uh, there's a lot of what they do on the customer side to convert them into process the orders. And then they uh, dispatch jobs to carriers, whether through our platform, finding carriers uh, in the carrier network, on Kershupio Marketplace, or posting to Central. <laughs> now there is a whole invoicing and billing part of it on the carrier side. They need to collect paperwork from carriers. Uh, we make it easier for carriers to submit the paperwork to a broker. Um, so literally, a lot of steps will be just discussed. There is no faxing. There is nothing for literally, literally uh, to, to button clicks. Even if they don't use our app uh, or like any electronic uh, BOL app, they can still do it. They don't have to be outpaying customers, the carriers, and they still they still can work easier with uh, with the broker. And then on the on the on the flip side, and then broker needs to invoice and bill the customers to collect the payments. There's a lot of workflow. There's a lot of automation built in to the whole process. And so, from what you're saying, I look at this lead, I look at the load lead flow, you know, that I put together, it sounds like for all the way from broker lead all the way to the end, the only part that doesn't start on your system is the actual lead from a, like a residential customer. But once they... That start today, but that's again, it's a tiny portion of what it does. But we do have every every aspect. We do have a, a public a quote page. Oh, you do. And some some of the screens that I send you actually showing that we have a good portion of uh, unbrokered loads or direct from consumer loads available to carry us today on the marketplace. That shows that we do have leads coming in, and we today make them available directly to the carriers, which no one in the industry does. At all. So if I pull up the CRM image that you gave me, is that the right one? Let's uh, see. For what? What are you trying to show? Um, you were talking about you sent me some screenshots, and would CRM be the right screenshot for that? Um, uh, uh, no, it would be the latest email I sent. It says like marketplace or MP stuff. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, let's do, okay, yeah. I pulled that up right before we went live. So let me see if I can pull that up here. Uh, 
Okay, so this is an image from the. Is this from the marketplace? I don't see it yet. I have a delay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and you. I, what I did is there were three links and then an image. So I saved one, two, and three, and then the image is four. So. Uh, what is that? One minute delay. Nah, it's like, it should be like seven seconds, but I don't know. It's actually interesting. While we're, hey, oh yeah, so yeah. Uh, while, oh, I, I was not live, sorry. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. No, yeah, that, that's not, that's, that's the one we want, uh, want to discuss about the uh, bid, uh, bad bid. Okay. You know, wrong amount to pull up another one. So there's two, then there's, how about this one where you've got a bunch of arrows and circles? Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. And while... While that's happening, yeah, Mark has asked you a question. You've responded to him, and I guess you can answer that whenever you, whenever you feel like. Because we're gonna get into some of that too, you know. Because I know, you know, you know, I know there are people that don't know the difference between. This is rare, but there are gonna be people that don't know the difference between a load board, or a TMS, or a marketplace, or a broker tool, like. Some people don't know, you know, how to all, what are all these pieces? How do they interact? In fact, auto quoting software. Some people aren't going to even know what auto quoting software is. So I'm just yeah, saying. So, uh, many, many things you 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 express me that uh, on the broker side. So I guess you have more of a theater listener. So yes, a lot of people do not know that. So but that image you just had up that that shows actually. Uh, you know, if you see, we have some of the loads that have no price that come directly from the customers, and we make them available today uh, to carriers direct. Like I said, no one does it. So yeah, because I mean, I, okay, this image. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm not, I'm not very familiar with this. This is your marketplace, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. With your right, you've got. So you've got. If you're a carrier. So this would be like a load board. You call it a marketplace. One could think of it as a load board, right? Sure. Yeah, okay. And I mean, right now, you know, because some carriers say, okay, well, how many load boards are there? Well, I did, I, I made my video, I think we talked about this. I made my video, Top 5 Car Hauling Load Boards, which I said, um, I said, you've got Central, Ready Auto, United Road, Cars Arrive, Metrogistics and I included ship cars, so it's actually six. But then if I moved into, I actually do believe there are other load boards where, uh, if, if whether you're considering with that company or you want to find an, another load board, and I'm not talking emails. Emails would be a third tier. Like I get emails from United Road and Masney Logistics and. There's other carriers or other brokers I get emails from. But as far as load boards, your marketplace is a load board where people can look for loads, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And this is the this is the car shipio marketplace. Right. So we 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 actually have a free access uh, to a marketplace, a load board, but we also provide obviously a software management uh where management software uh, or TMS for car haulers or car carriers or transportation company besides the brokers. So any core, any carrier with one truck or more is our as our customer, a potential customer that will greatly benefit from the software. There's a driver app, well, trying DOL, EPOD. So basically, so um, uh, right about middle of your list, that's where, um, you know, that's where um, the carrier stuff starts. Yeah, well, and after, I after, after, after loads being dispatched on Central, for example, or Cars Arrive, or any of the load boards you mentioned, and 25 others brokers, we do import them all into one place. Um, so we have a competition, and another company, Super Dispatch, that does something similar. I believe we do a lot more uh, as far as importing loads. Not that it's so much better, but it does uh, allow carriers to, you know, um, manage a lot more stuff in one place. Uh, it makes it easier on the data entry, so there's less data entry. As far as uh, your data entry points, uh, when the load comes in, we do a lot of stuff to clean that data because it's horrible. 
in some cases it's pretty bad um, on specific brokers, it's worse than others. Uh, so um, uh, I would say Central Dispatch has a lot of, I mean, freeway of how the data can be entered. So it can get imported in a horrible way, like address would be screwed up in a way beyond recognition. And if, if you're an owner of the company and you have a driver somewhere and all you do is just forward that dispatch to the driver while you just pass on the problem to the driver, technically, and he has to figure out and decipher where the address starts. I mean, yes, he can do it, but he has to spend an extra, you know, 10 minutes or so to, to figure it out. So we validate the address, we calculate the distance, we do VIN validation, uh, you're making model look up. So, um, system generates internal load numbers. There's a lot of stuff that it does. And it's not something normally um, a typical, I guess, I don't want to stereotype, but a, a lot of people in car hauling are not used to software, not used to systems. And most of the people do not come from a business world they, where they would have to sit in front of a computer and work on something or analyze the data or understand why it's important to have good records. Um, but that's uh, that's where you know software starts coming in, and in the beginning of the process, as you're getting loads. Well, you know it's interesting. I want, there's a few things I want to say. Number one, uh, when it comes to importing loads, uh, there will always be some challenges because there's so many different dispatch sheets out there. There's too many, right? So that's right. almost like an ongoing battle. Um, and I know that it just so happens that. Ship.cars, and I was telling you this too, Ship.cars gave me a demo last week um, where they are also working on the same, what you know, the import feature, whether it's Carshipio, Super Dispatch, or Ship.cars, you still have some of the same challenges, many dispatch sheets. And so, for the record, since we're talking about this technology, these technologies, is that um, I am with Auto Transport Intel. I am here talking about all the technologies. All technology providers are welcome on this show to talk about their technologies because overall, what we're here to do right now is talk about the industry and the technologies within the industry. So, um, what I want to say is one of the things you were talking about of the different functions of what your technology is doing is that. Carriers know they would like to see more out of central dispatch. I, I'm almost positive of that. But you can't find even this interface in central dispatch. Uh, sure. I mean, that's uh, what gives a lot of technologies, I mean, technology companies that are starting up, I guess, an advantage uh, unless you just want a copy of what somebody already has. So when you're starting from scratch, um, you can look into completely new ways of doing things, or not not that anyone's doing something really revolutionary, but uh, still frees you up. So, for example, we didn't start as far as marketplace. We did not, it didn't go with a Craigslist model where somebody would just list the load and then I'll have to call and talk to somebody and then they'll have to call me back if they decide to pick up the phone, you know, before 12 o'clock, for example. So, you can request the load with one click. That's what happens, right? So, I mean, you can do it on ready. I think you can do it on cars ride. Uh, but uh, we open it up to not so right, cars ride ready month way. They have bigger brokers, they're top five brokers, and yes, they have a technology. But this platform allows any broker coming in with, you know, shipping 50 cars a month or, you know, 500 cars a month to have basically the same capabilities in a way. Yeah, and it's almost the same capabilities. We try to say, okay, uh, I don't need to answer calls to, to see who's interested in my load. Awesome. I don't need to call carriers back uh, and waste my time. Great. I don't need to process, you know, faxes and, and, and text messages with BOLs and all that. Awesome, you know. So there's a lot of um, corners that are being caught by simple innovation. I mean, and we just, we just, we just getting started, really. So. Well, and it's interesting because one of the things, one of my big points of talking about all this technology is because when I talk to carriers, they're still, they're always trying to find out how do I hang on to more of the money that we know the shipper is paying. 
And I like how you were showing, let me see if I can pull this up. You were showing that in your marketplace, um, a lot of the images I send actually showing that that you can. Let's see. I want to find the image. Which image shows that your? Because I don't. I don't know these. Where, where you can post your rate, right? I guess if it's open. So the, no. uh, you, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no, right there when you click request, it doesn't show. It. I didn't send that image to you. Oh, okay. But uh, you, you can actually post one of the images that I, I showed you is actual example of a carrier bidding on on a, on a on a load and the problem that I wanted to discuss as well of when we do give an access to a carriers, you know, to have this wonderful access to literally uh, a load that is uh, first of all you can ask for price for different price or you can uh, have access to a load bypassing the broker in that example. So yes, you can make an extra hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever. But what a lot of people do, what we see right now, it's kind of like a wild, wild west, maybe because people are not used to it. So people ask for some crazy stuff. I and mean, we have, we see it all around. So that's an example of a load, I guess, that you just pulled out. The person, I believe that's where the information, right? So they're asking for 1575. That load on Central, you can pull it up comparable probably right now, if you want. It's the fact that it's probably going for 650, 700 bucks, 800 bucks. So, they were really asking for 85 percent more, and that's the carrier. We called them and we talked to them, and they said, "Yes, that's not just what I want." That's cool, but that doesn't help anyone. I guess that that scares uh, a customer away that they can go with a broker, for example. Uh, well, scares, or that scares the broker. It scares, it scares anybody because it's in. It's it's not. And don't get me started with tolling companies. Uh, you know the rates that they submit sometimes. So even if it's if it's a local job, they they go with a three dollar a mile thing and. Oh, yeah. For the world. Well, I'll tell you what. What I think, what I see is, and I'm glad we're talking about this stuff, is that uh, people are so irritated at feeling like they're getting, that they've been ripped off, is that given the opportunity to name their price, they're going to go in the other direction. Whereas the customer wants it moved for 100 bucks, they say, well, I'll move it for 5000 You know, both people are being ridiculous. Um, and, 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 and hopefully with enough of that, given if, if people can get that out of their system and just give, you know, well, I'll tell you what, like we were talking about auto quoting, I think carriers could use some, uh, some like broker yeah. level auto quoting, yeah. uh, right. To get like, yeah. what's a really, what's an, what's a good, honest market level quote to a shipper rather than because we're still guessing we we hit the compare button um although you're not get, if you look at your cost per mile and add i don't know 40 percent yeah i mean you got to look at your cost and you got to look at the market rate because uh as well uh and or for specific length but here is no more than on anybody, uh, especially if they're on the same lane, they know the prices. So it's easy. We're actually introducing uh, functionality right now for bigger carriers to set up lanes and set up automatic pricing. Oh, wow. It helps them, it helps them price oh. their loads. It helps them price how much they pay the drivers, you know, automatically. So, um, but that's again, that really is applicable to a bigger carrier. But I do want to bring up, you know, that um, no matter what the technology is, no matter how complicated it seems, I think any company that's just looking into starting in, in this business, they should, they should really embrace it, and they should uh, not even go into this if they're gonna think like, like a driver. They should start thinking like a like a business owner. Uh, they should learn a lot of new skills if they want to be competitive. They should learn, you know how to be, like you're saying, right, how to be a little bit of a broker, right, how to talk to the customers, how to, you know, be nice, how to, you know, be on time, respond, not not, not to be, like, deliberate or picking up on time, but at least uh, be transparent about it. If you're late, you know, you pick up a phone call and explain instead of just avoiding uh, picking up a phone for half a day, for example. So there's a lot of issues that uh, carriers avoid doing, and that's what, uh, you know, um, 
but yet everyone likes to bitch about how you know brokers are taking all the money. But there's a lot of things that typical care just doesn't do, uh, which uh, which which is needed. And basic not doesn't take much. You know, you can have tools that help you do most of it. Plus, you know, you just have to have a process that helps you helps you on all the aspects besides picking up and delivering cars. Well, you know, it's interesting is, and I, I'm processing what you're saying. And you know what's interesting? I've seen carriers overall get a lot more savvy in the last few years, much faster than I had expected. So yeah, when we started, when we started, we had um, we had a tough time in the beginning, even even getting a, you know a single customer to 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 sign on to it. Uh, it was it was tough in the beginning. So it's still tough, especially with the with the smaller guys, because uh, we we built something that is bigger than what they ready for. I think so. So we built something that's more powerful that that the typical um, you know uh, three car hauler thinks he needs. Let's put it this way. But that's good because um, when people do decide to adopt a technology, they expect it to do many things. Um, I mean, we, essentially, I'm always talking about expectations. When you're dealing with customers, their expectations, I think, in every industry are extremely high. We expect shipping to happen overnight. We expect um, banking to be immediate. You know, there's a lot of ex expectations, which, again, is why it's hilarious to even talk about faxing in your um, carrier packet to the biggest load board in the country. That's hilarious. Yeah, it is hilarious. I mean, it's really nuts. Um, and I also, I guess on the one hand, I'm, I'm happy that I'm happy that they don't have this level of software because if if they're gonna if they're just gonna ignore the marketplace so much, then you know they shouldn't lead the way in technology, um, and somebody else is gonna have to pick up the baton, and that's what we're talking about here. You know, it's interesting. I'm I mean I'm in an awkward position. I want to talk about this technology, and yet you know I I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to say and not say, but I know it's important to talk about, and. You know, I'm not big on being told what I can and can't do, um, so we're going to talk about it. But I talk to new car haulers, and I and they reach the point where they're like, okay, Jay, what do you recommend? I'm like, well, I got a gag order for the next six months, and uh, so I don't know what to say. But I, I said, I'll, I'll talk about what's out there, and then uh, hopefully one day I'm free of these chains, and then I can just you know, really help people. So that's where I'm at. But we're still doing the show anyways. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? This is your... Uh... Uh, uh, this is like, well, you have trip a map, right? There. So this is a trip planner. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Uh, there's a lot of information on the screen, but pretty much allows any carrier to plan out the trip. So the previous caller was talking about, you know, looking to book loads two days in the half. I believe that logistics uh, or flexibility of logistics can then, well, I guess you can, you can you can you can make more money and save more time if there is flexibility. And the tool gives you flexibility enough. Obviously, if there are brokers that allow you to book loads ahead, that's part of the flexibility. But things like this, you can plan your work ahead. You know, you can say, okay, uh, I have my you know, nine-car trailer or three-car trailer, and I got this load from Cars Drive. I'm going to import them. I got this two loads from Radio. I got this five loads from Central, and I have two trucks or whatever. So you can plan a trip for a particular truck, even if you have one truck. You design and if you, you, you have a stop on the map. You can it, it optimizes your route, or you can actually... Uh, you know, rearrange the stops if you need to pick them up in a different order. But that's what you or a typical dispatcher or somebody like you or whoever works at the company can do. Right. That, that, tool, that tool technically does not exist. Perhaps it exists at bigger fleets or something like that. That, that. that tool or something like that, again, I don't know what our competitors are doing, but 
tools like this, they don't exist, nor do uh, one car or even two or three car carrier thinks about it every day. Right? They think about a lot of problems. But things like this, how many, how, how much time is actually saved, you know, where you can see exactly what's going on. It's not, it's not really a GPS. That's what people, so people, people tend to think in references, right? So I have a frame of reference of GPS, okay, I know, all right. Six months ago, people didn't have frame of reference of ELD or, or an app on the phone that every driver needs to use. Well, now that you're getting used to it, so, you know, we have, you know, customers coming over from our competitors, for example, and, again, frame of reference there as well, so they use the specific app, specific button, specific place. But what I'm saying is um, you, you don't think about, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, but this basically allows you to manage your entire trip you see all of the load, all of the stuff. That's awesome. Information here. You can keep track of expenses for the trip. It calculates the miles, the rate for you. Okay. I mean, things are not perfect, but, you know, to make it perfect, you, I guess, got to spend a little bit more time, you know, uh, uh, learning how to use the system right. Uh, uh, that's, 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 that's where it comes down to. Just invest a little bit of my time. Everybody wants, like, a simple button, like an easy button, right? <laughs> right. Press the button and everything works. And um, or I'm not gonna, or I'm just gonna go back to faxing, you know. So right. So well, that's all. You know what? I want to show you something. This is really interesting. I think this is a good time to check this out. Um, bear with me a second, because I found I've been doing research, and I've been looking a lot at the freight hauling industry. Okay. And check this out, man. I don't know if you've already seen this. Have you ever been to, you know that in freight, that there's two really big load boards. There's truck stop and there's DAT. And if you go to the truckstop.com YouTube site, and you can also go to, uh, just I'll point out how I got here. If you go to truck stop, truckstop.com and right there we go there's truckstop.com all right and if you go to their i think it's in demos or no resources they have training okay so truckstop.com is a load board and they've created all these training videos which i'm like wow nobody in car hauling has really done that right uh, I'm not sure it's nobody. I, I believe I've seen years ago some videos from Brady. I'm sure there's information out there. Not much. I well, believe me. I look. I'm on YouTube every day, and I, I'm just saying. I but is this, is, this, is this training how to use the software or what is what what kind of training? yes? It's how do you, so I went to their YouTube site, which is where all their videos store, and I clicked on their videos. And they have, I mean, look at all this video of how to use their product. And I thought, you know what? This is really, really cool. That's a great idea. You know, there's no need to make videos of other content when you have so much to your load board because let's do this. Let's, let's, let's watch a video. Let's watch a little bit of this video. As a carrier or owner operator, it's important that you use data to your advantage to capture as much revenue as possible on every single load that you haul. In this video, you'll learn how to access market data that will now, make you more confident when negotiating the with a broker coming through or on my show. When you create a new load search, results populate on the search grid. To access the load details page, which provides more detailed information on this load and the company that posted it, click on the posting. On the load details page, you have quick and easy access to average market rates for this lane and decision tools called loads to trucks ratio and load densities for a load's origin and destination. It's important to understand that spot market rates are largely determined by supply and demand forces. In trucking, supply means the number of trucks available to haul loads, and demand means the number of loads that need to be hauled. When the supply of trucks is low and demand for loads to be moved is high, then rates are high, meaning that you, the carrier, should feel more confident negotiating. On the other hand, when supply of trucks is high and demand for loads is low, 
then rates are generally lower, meaning that you, the carrier, should be more flexible when negotiating. Otherwise, that broker or shipper might go elsewhere for their transportation needs. Let's take a closer look at the decision tools that will provide you with data on the supply and demand market forces. Loads to trucks ratio shows the number of posted loads and posted trucks in the load's origin and destination. The market outlook is simply a ratio that shows the number of loads picking up to the number of trucks available. When there are significantly more loads than trucks, it should be easier for carriers to find loads, so you will likely have a better negotiating position. When there are- I'm gonna hit play again in a second, but the point here is that in freight at truckstop.com, not only is their site full of bells and whistles to help the user, but when you realize the insight and purpose of providing this information, it's it's actually mind-boggling to go back to Central and realize, you know, Cox Automotive knows about truck stop. It's not like they don't know. It would be like getting on an airplane and you've spent a hundred years on a desert island and you get on an airplane and show up in New York City and go, oh my God, I didn't know we had all this. Like, but they do know. They're just, they're, they're not, and I'm not trying to pick on just them. I don't see any buddy in my top five car hauling load boards working on helping them. And I will tell you this, you know who I do see is actually ship.cars. But I see it in what you're showing me. I do see the new players working on helping this industry. I don't see the old players. And I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit more of this video, but this a relatively is, even number of loads and trucks, this, the negotiation broken, strength yeah, between carriers and brokers will be fixed. So, well, okay. Uh, you know, companies like uh, Uber Freight and um, you know Convoy are getting crazy valuations, crazy investments. Yeah, I saw that Convoy news. And um, you know that that obviously is, um, you know, is a much more lucrative market. Uh, so what we see every day, if I want to share, be honest, is a lot of, so a lot, there's a lot of frustration, right? So technology, you know, I need better, I need it to work better, I need it to do this, this and that. But at the same time, um, what we see every day, and I shared it with you, Jay, right, is uh, uh, how they put it. Help me with my words, I guess. So, uh, typical person who signs up with us, uh, again, I don't think they are looking for technology. They're looking for loads. So they're suffering. They are, you know, apparently 40,000 loads that are available on central dispatch is not enough, and they manifest it by saying, "I'm looking for more loads," yet they don't have any process in place to figure out if, if they even making money. Or, you know, I I talked to the carrier another day. He's been in business for six months and they didn't know who ready is, you know, who United Road. You know, so they don't know, you know, five out of six top brokers that I named to them. So nor on the flip side, Ready or United will actually sign up a guy like that to put, you know, for specific periods of time. So there's a lot of issues. But what, what we see is um, uh, there's not a lot of support uh, in um, in in uh, embracing a technology unless like people people want everything you know attention span is like five seconds right now the uh, younger generation or people who are in 30s i guess who are going into car hall in my 20s that's people who grow up with facebook right so they um you know you, know, you gotta remember that so they uh, they want everything compared to that you know you know we hear it every day how come your app doesn't do that or why it takes me five seconds you know i'm busy i'm car hall Okay, well, you just heard somebody talking about taxing, you know, for, you know, and that happened. You know, a lot of brokers that we talk to, most of them deal with tax today from uh, more than half of the carrier. You know, they, they send them stuff, you know, they text them pictures, you know. Um, so it, it, it's kind of it's it's like a, it, it, I, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, but it's tough. Like, you, you showed me something that that is uh, that is out there uh, that has, uh, you know, probably employed millions or billions of dollars. Investment or, Agreed. or you know central dispatch for example yes look at the technology but when smaller company like us trying to do something great 
you know, you're always uh, thrown back at, uh, you know, things like things like that. We compare it either to potential dispatch on a number of cars or Facebook on or Facebook app on being a better app or something like that. So, you know, it, it's just it's just like what I'm asking for, I guess, is you know, people to be more um, appreciative of, of, of smaller companies or new companies that are doing something for them uh, in this space, in this particular niche, because it's a smaller niche of the of the almost trillion dollar transportation industry. So it's it's really tiny, not tiny, but I don't know if it's 10 or 20, 15 percent, but it's a small niche. Well, that's and what you said is actually one of the reasons why I think it's I think it's right and just to have you on the show because you are technically a small company trying to make larger strides and that should be celebrated as opposed to a large company making very tiny strides. Yeah. So if you go if you go to any Facebook group, there's a lot of groups and you're probably all part of them. Read all the comments, how everyone's like there's the same pattern, everyone's bitching about brokers, everyone's bitching about central dispatch. They but are. Yet, when I personally bring up uh, a Corsupio in for example in a in a in a you know, or something, just a general conversation, you know, there's like there's like there will there will always be like a, a negative feedback from some 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 user well, who who had a bad experience six months ago and then you know, other people are gonna listen to uh, you know an avatar on the Facebook instead of you know looking for themselves. Well, it sounds to me like you you should uh, you should reconnect with a April because apparently Royalty Logistics loves your product and maybe that that might be a good avenue to pursue. They are a customer. Well, I know, but yeah, I mean, a, a and that's actually this is something everybody agrees on. I know. That everybody agrees on this, that a happy customer is literally your best voice to yeah. new customers. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So, um, and April's, April is saying yes. <laughs> that is fantastic. I, uh, for the record, I, April and I don't even know each other. April, did you say you... You, so you must know Gary at Gartho Logistics, I think you said back in your comments. And all. And what's funny is, April didn't know that you were going to be on the show tonight. So this is really, really cool. Um, yeah, I never talked to April. I guess she works at uh, Royalty, but uh, maybe, I don't think we personally ever talked to her. So, so hey, April. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys should talk. And you guys, maybe, maybe we can... Uh, um, you and April, uh, if there's a way I can help you make the video, I don't think you need me in there. I think you guys could make a video. You're you're a video guy, I think, right? You've got, you know how to do that. You guys should make a video. Yeah, April says I had no clue. It is really funny. So, um, but I I I want to say this too is that I agree with you. Truck Stop and DAT they are giant companies, um, but I don't think Cox is any smaller than these okay. than those guys right and but you yeah i think you're comparing i don't know who's behind truck stop i don't know but I don't either. Cox automotive or cox industries or whatever the name is it's a humongous humongous entity so and so central dispatch is probably a, a spectacle in the portfolio so, exactly uh, and then we all concentrating on that cox automotive central dispatch but you know, it's just, it's just, uh, you know. Well, they, I'm sure they know what they're doing. I'm sure they have their own priorities straight. It's just uh, apparently that's what I'm kind of saying. So, right. Um, why do we have hard time converting, for example, a broker who who hates J Tracker, who hates Central Dispatch, but yet they're staying there? You know, they they would not have a leap. For example, it doesn't make sense. So, we offer you a product that you you love for half the price, and what else do we need to do? Like, well, what else? Well, and this is what advertising is all about, is advertising, communication, and marketing help spread a message that people just otherwise don't have. Because I know, I've talked to, listen, I'm, I'm a dispatcher talking to car haulers, but I've started talking to brokers, I've started talking to shippers, and now I've heard some brokers say they hate J-Tracker. And I've, so I can verify what you just said. 
but I think that some probably hate J-Tracker, still use J-Tracker, which is just like there's a, plenty of carriers that hate Central Dispatch, continue to use Central Dispatch, just like, you know, Vinny will hold his nose and book a car with Motway if he has to. I mean, it, we're all, this is a business, um, and we also can't, things don't change overnight, things have changed faster than probably ever before, but I still say the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and I'm going to be talking about the squeaky wheels. What? Okay. <laughs> because what else do I have to do? I'm a dispatcher. I'm a guy sitting at a desk. So, there, so there you go. Hey, let's pull up some more images here. Let's do, um, and then let's see. Let's do. Let's look at our time. What we'll do is we'll do. Oh, we're at three hours. So maybe we'll go another fifteen minutes and then we'll shut her down. Sound like a plan? All right, cool. Um, let's do. Here's another good one. Let's pull this image up. My, co my computer's running a little slow, but that's okay. It's funny, I can tell when I'm pushing it to its limits. Here we go. Got it. There's this. Okay, this is. What is this, Stan? This is from. Oh, yeah, right. I Okay, I'm going to start it up. I think that this is a report. So you've got, uh, oh, you've got expenses. Okay, expenses, revenue, profit, invoice. You're going to see it here in a second come up. Um, and then you've got like a pie chart, color codes. And this is to help you. You know, we were talking about earlier that um, you have tools that, maybe go above and beyond what some carriers need. Um, but this, like your expense tool, this is your, I think well, this- they, they, they really, they, they really don't go above and beyond more than they need. They go above and beyond more than they think they need. Oh, okay. I'll tell you that. Okay. Right? That, that, that's our position. I, I mean, I, I strongly feel that if you are no longer a driver and you're starting your own company, you just got to stop thinking as a driver and got to start thinking as a business owner, right? So, and you have to learn a lot of things. And a lot of guys spending more time investing time and money into, you know, which truck they need to buy, which trailer, which there's, there's just few, you know, there's like, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of more setups and I don't know much about it. I mean, I know basic information, but there's not like there's 50,000 configurations, you know, but things like once, Uh oh, I lost you. Hang on, Stan. I lost you on the. Oh, now I hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Things like I lost you for a second. I things you were saying things. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying people people uh, go into business uh, without realizing that they need to keep track of a lot of things and you know expense is important. You know, understanding whether you're profitable or not is important. Understanding your best paying routes, your best paying customers. You know, because uh, uh, everyone's working hard. A lot of guys dispatching themselves, you know, at the truck stop or when they take a break, they go on central with the load. They only look at that uh, available load on the tiny screen and the small uh, frame of reference. But then what happens after that when they pick up or deliver the car? Do they really know, uh, do they really remember if that rate that they just got is, is better or worse or the same that similar car they hold on a similar route, you know, two months ago? You know, are they getting a good deal? Do they really know? Do they really know? You know, who do they need to invoice? Who did not pay them? Who is constantly late? I mean, yeah, I mean, some, have, some people have a more brain capacity, better memory, right, than others. But, you know, uh, you have you have tools. It's kind of like without them, you, 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 you can run, but you kind of run in blindfolded in a way. So, yes, you don't think about it, but, you know, it's usually there. Well, yeah. I, I, and I totally agree with you. You can't you can't run your business by memory, because especially if there's more than one person in your business. Oh yeah. It's got there. There has to be records and record keeping, yeah. and it has to be. You have trust issues, and you have it's just basic stupid human mistake. You know, we have we have carriers that are starting up with one truck, looking to to grow, and they have 
you know, a lady dispatcher who they, who were, you know, husband, like wife or, or an owner or something like that, and like a manager comes in and brings in this software or brings in this process, and within, you know, a year they have, instead of one or two trucks, they have five or six, and they have the same number of people working. So, and as an owner of the company, you immediately get feedback, you immediately get return on your investment. This, whatever, $100 a month you spend on a software, you know, gives you 10x, 15x return right away by just, you know, spending, you know, a week of time learning something, understanding the process, realizing you have been doing some of, some of the things wrong. And a lot of people are, you know, sticking to their process and they kind of resist, but that's everywhere with any business, with any startup. When you're starting something new, when you're offering something that technically does not exist, even though it solves the problem, um, you know, you only can have small number of problems that people know they have, but there's a lot it's a lot harder to to get solve a problem people do not know they have. Ah, I don't know what I don't know. I know what I don't know. I do know what I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Well exactly so, I, mean, I, I, I would I would think a business owner who runs a, a trucking company for a couple of years knows everything and been through this. But again, they used to do certain things certain way and they're resisting to, you know, maybe switch to certain processes. And we, we hear it all the time, uh, you know. Um, and when people don't think they, they have a problem, oh, I just get, I just, I just send my, I just send my loads, I just, I just text my drivers, you know, PDF, uh, dispatch, or I email them, okay. Uh, what about cars that are, yeah, I email them, okay. What about, them? yeah, yeah, I email them, okay. So then, then a driver has to fit in his, you know, why he has to worry about everything else. He has to, what, sit and go through, you know, Deleting the Viagra ads and figuring out where the, where the hell is that dispatch? Okay, here's my dispatch. That, well, that's and, and I gotta, right. Got to bring up you know thousand different uh, documents that look completely different, and I gotta hope the information is correct there. You know, you know, I, I gotta hope that you know broker put the correct address so I don't drive 800 miles the wrong way or something, or I, I don't get on the wrong street. Oh, it was North Avenue versus just Avenue, you know, something like that. So. Totally. Yeah, and it's just it's just something something that a dispatcher on an owner or even that owner operator can yeah can have a tool and spend extra minutes processing that piece of yeah everyone says I don't have time okay you have a minute of time to process a load well you only deliver 10 15 loads a week you really don't have 15 minutes of time okay why don't you drive 400 400 miles the wrong direction or why don't you have a wrong win or something like that and then uh, you know or, or or dispute that you cannot argue because you put a chicken scratch on your DOL, you know, why, why don't you go do that, you know? So we hear it all the time. We, 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 we're battling this uh, every every day. So it, it's fun, but it's, it's kind of like, you know, in Russian, in Russian there's a saying, you're kind of peeing against the wind sometimes, you know? <laughs> so That's a, right. You know, That's right. We have the same thing. We have the exact yeah, same. Right. Well, and it's, so, and I, 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 I agree with what you say as far as, data management, data integrity, and you hear reasons why, but then when you start to use a system that's better, right, which is where so many things are education, education based, and like, so do you see, I think you see on screen now, I have your BOL. Okay, yep, that's an example of BOL after the driver has inspected. They send you some pictures on the driver app as well, but that's what typical uh, broker or shipper or customer gets versus uh, a paper DOL that everyone knows how it looks like. So uh, when a broker uh, gets a carrier using electronic DOL or they have a document like that delivered to them together with a nice looking professional invoice, uh, I would easily argue that uh, a carrier starting up has a much better chance of retaining that customer you know, or, or getting more business from them. So that's that's your revenue right there. You you actually walking away from it by just having those one-time customers. Because you're just like everyone else. You know, you're you sending them. Uh, you you're giving them too much hassle to process your paperwork when you can spend li literally a minute or add a minute or or 20, 20 seconds, depending on what we're talking about, into your process. Once you got the process down, it doesn't take much time. It actually takes less time. You know, so, uh, you know, right. filling out, you know, importing a lot from central dispatch on our platform today takes one click or two clicks or three clicks if you import to the PDF, you know. Uh, and, then the, and then the load is right there. Filling out the paper BOL takes at least a minute. 
I mean, if you have a BOL with 10 cards or 5 cards, 17 characters in each, that's 117 characters, 170 characters, just in Zims alone that the driver has to fill out. 170 characters. Well, you know, it, it, it's really interesting how fast... Like I think, I think in general, there's a lot more people doing electronic bills of lading today than there was even two years ago. Sure. I mean, I think it's changed. Yeah. So there is good news. There's a lot of changes happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that again, I don't understand why some of the larger, some of the, some of the largest companies in this industry can't lead the charge and i'm fine with that they're not but they're not helping either this is where we get into i gotta have a million mobile apps you hear that conversation right okay. you gotta have the vtas you gotta have the car max you gotta have the one dispatch thank goodness central dispatch isn't saying you gotta have the central dispatch app but you hear you know more transport supreme um you know i i, I mean i think there's like a good 10 now uh, Row Logistics, I think they've got something they need you to use. And then now there's some that's piggybacking. I think Row Logistics actually needs you to use the car, the Cars Arrive app for their CarMax loads. Anyways, there's this, there's some crossbreeding going on. What do you say about all that stuff? Uh, so, I, as far as uh, that there's so many apps, so it's, 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 I can understand why drivers uh, or carriers don't like it, obviously. But at the same token, um, so for example, our app or Super Dispatch app, right, works pretty similar as far as you can get, you know, you can get any load on it, and, and then you accept it pretty much, and then you get your DOL, you get your invoice. So uh, brokers apps do not do that, right? They only work with their own loads, their own app. So it's literally two companies that are actually allowing you to take any load, and I don't know if Ship of Cars does it, but take any load oh, no. and, and run it, and take any load that you imported from anywhere or enter this, you know. Or I think Ship. I think Ship got. I, I'm sorry. I think Ship dot Cars does allow you. I think it's three. Let's just call them on place. <laughs> I know. You know what? I'm trying to not. I don't. I don't need the frustration. Okay. So yeah, okay, so there's, there's two and a half companies or three and a half apps, that would be right. apps that actually do that. So to answer the question, uh, why brokers um, have apps, they need standards, and that, that goes into what I'm saying. They don't see carriers have any standards, having any respect of, uh, of, uh, of like, I, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, let me put it back. I'm, I'm not like, saying carriers don't have respect no, for brokers. No, I, I like saying. what you said. I'm saying um, it takes a little bit of effort to provide a better customer support to your to your broker. So when when they ask you for something nice and clean as far as documentation, uh, maybe you can just send an email. Like um, and again, uh, on the on the, on the opposite spectrum, you have people that ask you to fax stuff. But I think clean electronic DOL emails and delivered to the to the broker. Uh, they should be fine to accept that. I don't think all of this, whatever, A10 apps or broker apps uh, require you to use the app. They would love you to use the app because that flows data into the system better. That's how it's easier for them to exchange information with the carrier, and that's how they make it easier for the carrier to give information back to them. Uh, side of pickup delivered, you know, pictures. I don't know what the other apps do, but... But there's a lot of things that are pretty much immediately available. So compare that to no app and the paper process. Okay, I'm the broker. I just sent you a job. Well, how do I know that you actually picked up the, the car? Well, I have to call you. Well, Jay, uh, eight out of ten carriers that sign up with us, that sign up with us. We don't do a cold call. They actually sign up with us. And we call them. Eight out of ten carriers do not pick up the phone first time. We have to call eight out of ten carriers a second time to talk to them. I don't know what's the number on the second call, but it's insane. It isn't. To me, that's insane. You've just signed up for the product. 
and uh, you don't know who's calling, but you know if you don't answer the call, and you don't not not that they don't answer, they don't even call back on on the voicemail. So if I'm if I'm give you you know a Maserati to ship for you know hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I have to call you for three days, and it's not I don't know if it's typical, but that we we I guess we 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 have a maybe unique perspective than a lot of uh, maybe listeners or watchers of the show. Uh, so, but we do talk to a lot of carriers, and if 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 on yeah. the flip side I have to hunt down a carrier to give me the status, and then carrier has five voicemails and he doesn't know who's calling, where maybe he has to listen to all of them and figure out okay, it's more calls, it's the same broker about the same car, or I gotta look up their number. You know, there's a lot of wasted time on both sides. It's just, it's just stupid. I think it's retarded. I think it's stupid. <laughs> Not exist. I should, but, just well, not exist. you know why? But it's so. I like what you're saying, and I like that. We're, this is so great. We're talking about this because I think the reason it happens is because they've been worn out. You know, if if you get if you get people ringing your doorbell six times a day, you're never going to answer the door anymore, even if it's the bank with a bar, you know, a sack of gold. And that's what's happened is that brokers have worn them out. Okay. I know, and, right, and so, um, yeah, so that's why that's why apps exist. So our app, for example, there's yeah. no calls. A broker has to make. There's no callback you need to make. Yeah, you just get a signature and boom, they know the car is picked up. You know the car is delivered. You press the button, they get an, an invoice. And Guess that, what? You don't have to worry about them not paying you because there is a report that will show you that, and there is an automated uh, follow up that that our system sends to the broker. So and they do respond to them. Because we keep bugging them every day. Hey, you didn't pay, you didn't pay, you didn't pay. We do that for the carrier. Right. Well, and that's what's yeah. cool. The technology can help the carriers. Yeah. That's why, I mean, the carriers, and I think the carriers need technology to help them get some of their time and money back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's why, so it's, and that's why it's frustrating to have, as to bring it back home, a fragmented industry, so fragmented, so untrustworthy yeah. of each other, right? Oh my gosh, people are ready to go to war. I mean, we're just, uh, some of the names I've said, there's, you know, all these feelings, and it's like, oh my gosh, can't even talk about companies without somebody feeling hurt or this or that. And I mean, we just, we just, we're trying to improve the industry, right? Yeah, I mean, I think in the future uh, you might have more uh, of a bigger broker putting up their own apps. I mean, everyone needs to have a technology, but at the end of the day, uh, they will be as, for example, as our platform develops, we always will be looking forward to provide any integration with any bigger broker or any player that that will give them what they want. Yet, uh, does not put an extra extra step on carriers. So uh, there is no need technically for them to have an app if the app can do whatever they want. If if the app is satisfactory to the process that they need, as far as this, it's probably you know it's the same pattern in in any broker pretty much. Uh, but again, they might have specific business roles that they can enforce uh, on an app, for example, on the, on a specific role. So that's why and there's a, there's a lot of aspects. You, you, you just you just you just don't know what's behind. So, uh, but technically, there is no huge. I think the biggest problem is they need any sort of process that simplifies their workflow, and they can try. They they get it with with the carrier using an app versus you know 50,000 versions of paper DOL being faxed, emailed, uh, text messages. You know, it it, it is insane. Like, I mean, on the carrier side, it also. I mean. There is no, there is no process. There is no rule. There is no best standard. You know, yeah, you you may have a best standard after you in the industry for six years and you got, you know, but you have fifty thousand times and you burn yourself and you lost a lot of money and you learn by losing money. Yeah, uh, but you know, I wish the you know, if people would adopt, you know, you know, be more receptive to processes, technology, understanding. You know, I need I need a better workflow. I need a better business rules. I need to learn that it's important. I need to understand the basics. Uh, it's not just how to, um, you know, I'm not a truck driver, so I'm not saying I know better how to load a car on a trailer, but I don't need to. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not solving that for people. We're not solving that for people. That's right. I'm not providing them an algorithm of how to load the cars better, like the company doesn't exist anymore, try to do. 
you know. So yeah, no. um, we 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 just try to simplify the workflow for everyone involved, and I think that's what brokers also look for. So they ask. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I think it's time to end this show for the evening. Um, you, I really appreciate you coming on tonight, um, taking the time, spending the time with the uh, with the audience to discuss these things. And um, it's it's been a while since I had you on the show. So listen, man. Thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, man. All right, dude, let's do a piece out here. Let's do, okay, so you're still in the, let's back out of this. You're still in the video. I'm going to, uh, let's see here, go back to the meeting. All right, I'm, I'm going to hang up the phone, okay, Stan? Yep. All right, man, take care. Okay, guys, so. That is the end of another, wow, it was a crazy show. It was a crazy show in that um, trying to tackle a lot and what's so interesting is to actually have my own technological issues in the middle of a show about technology. I got to say that is a very interesting thing. But it's okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just a dispatcher. Just a guy sitting at a desk. Alright, that's, you know, that's funny, Jay, but you know. Alright, well we know better now. Um, but you guys know that Auto Transport Intel is here to help. I am here to help the industry, um, and I think I am helping actually um, by drawing by drawing attention to um, there's a, there's pl we got plenty of problems to go around. Dispatching is is too aggravating. Um, carriers don't know how to get more of the money that the shipper is paying. The money's there, and they want to know how to get it. And um, we know there are, I mean, there's plenty of technological advancements that need to happen. There's something about, you know, just the the integrity of, you know, working as carriers, dealing with brokers, and, and, the, and the problems that happen there. And uh, customers, especially residential customers, totally not understanding the car hauling process. Oh, my gosh. Don't get me started. I got so many videos, and um, I've already there's stuff I haven't finished editing. But uh, I do want you. Let me just say this too. Let me close this here for a second. You know about the website. You know on YouTube. You go to Auto Transport Intel on YouTube. You know that I've got the Facebook page. Please uh, check out the posts I got going on there. If you got something nice to say, you can leave a review. What's cool is the blog post. The blog page is actually picked up in traffic, um, which is really neat. I'm getting more traffic here. People are, are interacting with the blog posts, asking questions, which is actually really great. In fact, overall, auto transport intel traffic is up. And so I'm really thankful for that. You guys know I'm here every Tuesday night. And if you've got something that you want me to talk about, I highly encourage you to email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Um, I'm guessing half of the audience is now either asleep or has just, you know, ran off the road, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but um, I know it's a really long show, and anybody that finishes the whole show, uh, the whole three, what do we have, three plus hours, I congratulate you on your stamina, your constitution. And um, it's just a testament to uh, the ability to put in long hours because that's what this industry is. So I guess the length of the show uh, resembles the industry in some way. But listen, man, I'm going to start up the car hauler. It really is time. I want to thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. Um, and um, I do like doing the show. I'm here every Tuesday night. <laughs> do have the uh, Facebook live that I do. Me and Dave will go live again next week. So listen, y'all. Take care. I'll see you next week. Peace out.